Good morning. Welcome into Herd at Sports Radio here on AM590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula here on the Pillar Exterior Stage. What's up, DB? What is going on? I saw a couple of Pillar cars again yesterday. Yeah? Yeah, along uh, Sun Street between 108 and 90th. I saw... Uh, I saw... One of the signs. I came, I came, I saw, I conquered. That's that's my guy, Julius Caesar. Oh, that's right. Vini Vini Vicky. Perdona, perdona, perdona me. That's the Latin. Yeah. Vini, I came, Vini, I saw, Vini. I yeah. 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 Very good. I'm, I'm a, glad you went to school. I'm a big Latin nerd. Were you? Yeah. So. Yeah, I think I think people forget that about me. That you're a nerd? No, no one does. No, the Latin part, specifically. Uh, I am uh, a big nerd in general. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know. I, I mean, no. <laughs> I just look at you and I scream. It screams Latin. I, mean, I do have a giant Latin word. Invictus. On my yeah. Arm. I like. Hey, listen though, that's kind of cool. If I wasn't a, Micah got his ears pierced the other day, and, and I took him to a tattoo parlor. Yeah. It's the first time I've ever stepped foot in one. Really? Ever? You didn't like go with a teammate or anything ever? Uh. Uh-uh. Because I know you don't have any, but I thought maybe I've 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 never been in a tattoo parlor. I thought maybe you rolled rolled with at some point. And it was kind of swank. I was like, huh. They're not uh, as like I feel like you should give me a club soda and we should chill. Like the the cor- the furniture yeah. was sweet. They're not as like divey. Some of them. Some of them are divey, but like some, a lot of them aren't as divey as people think. I, I would get something like not cool. Like what? I, I don't know. Like a shark? Uh no. Okay, well, you just love sharks. I, you know. I do, but that's a good guess. I, the only time I've ever contemplated it, it was, and this would have not aged well because mm-hmm. I'm I'm still not sure if we know where Diddy is. Um, would, would you have gotten like second to none? No, I wanted the <laughs> I wanted the bad boy <laughs> label. Oh, the, the yeah. little dude with his hat turned sideways. Oh yeah, yeah. And it says bad boy. Yeah, you might have had to get a cover up for that. <laughs> yeah, down the road here. Not, not have aged well. <laughs> It's okay. Well, now I've got the Maximus tattoo. I've got the SPQR. It's a, it's a great name. Yeah. Maximus. If I had a big dog, that was always going to be his name. I had a Mastiff named Maximus. That's where it yeah. came from. So um, I kind of show you sometimes those dogs. Oh, you, yeah. I just sent you one the other day. Yeah. Oh, man. Those... So my FYP page has a lot of um, dogs. I love Mastiffs. Mastiffs are great dogs. So there's there's a lot, a lot of big dogs around the world. Yeah. I, I typically find them. I don't want a big dog. I mean, they're cool. I used to want a big oh, dog. So you're a little dog guy, though. I am now. Yeah. He got he got some clothes. Biggie got some clothes yesterday. Did he? Yeah. This dude's, a little sweater. This dude's rocking a West Side hoodie. <laughs> they make West Side dog hoodies? Man, it's unbelievable. <laughs> so, and he's like not trying to take it off. Like, he's chill. Dude, one of my, Shadow loves wearing clothes. Yeah, I don't understand. Loves it. Like, if you, if you have, if he's got a sweater on or a, we got like sweaters, we got tank tops, we got hoodies, we got like the whole line of clothes oh, for Shadow. Oh, Lord have mercy. Are you listening to this dude, Shane? To be I, fair, that's a, my wife thing. I never bought clothes for my dogs until like she, she bought clothes for Shadows, even when she didn't have money for anything. Yeah. Um, And he loves it. Like if you, when you take it off of him to like wash it or whatever, he like throws a fit. Yeah. And then I, I got, got I got, I got, I got to see that. It's, I'll, I'll show it to you. It's hilarious. Dude's just rolling in clothes. He yeah, loves it. Does it does sound soft, Coach. Listen, you got you to get your dogs well-suited and booted. You know me. I like I like clothes. Yeah. Got to keep the dogs so looking clothes, dapper. Clothes are good. I don't uh... much, much prefer you in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I think, I think most people hey, do. So um, how, how are things, man? Are you recovered from that electric atmosphere man, last night? It was talk about crazy. Being, talk about being left for dead. Man, I did not think that was. I did not think that was like the, just the, the, the aura. Full the dis- vibe. Full disclosure. A few, a few couple of folks hitting the exits in the second set. Yeah, full disclosure. And Supernova's uh, semifinals match last night. I was actually there for both matches. Which Atlanta getting beat was a huge. How upset. about that? You get a huge. But upset. Grand Rapids did just beat yes. Omaha. Uh, what was it? Ten days ago, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, Green Rapids is good. Yeah, right. The like, record is a little Desa Evie evening. What do you really, think Donovan Mitchell saying to him right there? Yeah, man, my calves. I like, could, I couldn't play. He's like, hey, it's either, uh, it's either me or Darius. Let's get, let's yeah, get pick it's one. It's like, man, you know, I woke up, I had a little swelling in my calves. <laughs> Jared Allen still had a, his afro wasn't trimmed up, and Karis LeVert, 
Karis LeVert was like, man, nah. That's a, that's a weird series. I don't even. Uh, I, don't Can't even, even I don't even know why they played it. I, I guess just to get reps in. I don't even recognize what's going on there. Uh, but yeah, so so Atlanta got upset, which was uh, a big one in the first one, and then Omaha comes out, which Atlanta is the team Omaha struggled with all year, all, all year, and so Omaha, somewhere in Middle America. Oh, right, dab smack downtown, getting it in in an electric environment. It was, and and so Omaha comes out, and man, they just get smacked the first couple sets. Mm -hmm. Like it was the first set was pretty competitive. Second set, not not really. I mean, the second half wasn't that competitive. Yes, okay. There was a middle section there, yeah. like they got off to they got down like seven three, and then they played pretty well for the middle section, and then they got away from it at the end. The second set, they just got smacked. Like they just got whacked around a little bit, and I was like, as oh. my man Jay Foreman would say, "Molly whopped." I thought, yes, <laughs> that is, it was bad. And El champion. I I'm sitting there thinking, oh man, this is this is bad, and it there wasn't even really signs of life after the second set, and I thought we were in for an early night, not in the way that I was hoping, right? And then all of a sudden, Rafiki came in, and he's and like, then Simba, light switch. Circle and it of life. took a minute in the third set. It uh, took a minute for them to get going, but once they did, they they got it in the third set. And then they, as bad as they got beat in the second set, they gave it even worse in the fourth. I like to see you kind of ramp up your uh, Shane. What is that when music gets ready to just like spill over the top? Is it a crescendo? Hit that crescendo. crescendo. I feel like you're crescendoing. And then and man, go he, tell it. Hey, and then hey. the fifth set, that place was about ready to pop. Yeah, it was so loud in the fifth, the end of the fourth, and then into the fifth set. It was a great atmosphere. I have to give Omaha people a ton of credit Omaha. because we're sitting there. It's like eleven o'clock at night on a Wednesday, uh, and I'm like, "Is Robbie gonna come to work?" <laughs> I don't think so. Always, always Man, come to work. It's good to see you. It, uh, but it was a great atmosphere. So Omaha is going to play in the championship on Saturday. It was honestly, it was, it was a super fun atmosphere, and I'm, I'm glad I got to be there for it. It was yeah. incredible, and I was, I uh, was incredibly happy that, um, I got to see Sasha wipe down food. <laughs> She said she did. She she validated you I, and also validated the fact that you're like, I think 90 percent of these people are lying. Yeah, they are lying. Yeah, I don't have any. I, I don't have any reservation about saying that. I you, tried you, to tell her not. To I do mean, it too. straight up Tim Johnson. Everybody <laughs> has wiped down food at one. Now, maybe it was for your four year old, but no, let, cut everybody it, cut it out, man. Since I don't have kids, do I get an exception to the lying rule? Because I really don't think I have. Yes, you have. I really don't think so. It, it, Selfish. <laughs> Listen, man, I remember I, I was at Oklahoma Tyler's. Okay. He had a he has a couple cool cooking tools. He had a green egg, one of the first guys I, I knew to have one. Oh, like the little okay, yeah, yeah. And uh every you know, it seemed like I was always over there. And there was some there was people would bring like potluck and stuff, mm -hmm. right? And some was a little saucy. I I'm telling you, I walked out on the deck, I toweled that thing down. And I'll tell you what it was. It was a bomb that my man Maddie Milliken made. Okay. And it it had like everything in it, and it was wrapped in bacon. It looked like a giant meatloaf, but it had all this sauce on top, right? And I was like, "Ooh, the, the guts in here look sensational," and it smelled amazing because he's a pretty good smoker. But I, I went out there and I I towed that bad boy down. Came back inside and ate it like nobody's business. I got no, like, I don't know why people act like that was so weird. And here's the thing. And I'm going to leave this right here. Okay. Do people not understand it was huge meatballs and spaghetti? Like, if all else fails, just read. <laughs> like, read that. Like, read what we're talking. You can't just, like, jump in in the It was a goddamn spaghetti ball. It's, or six of them. But still. I can't read. Man. I don't even know what this means, but it was hilarious. Did I tell you when the dude said, I'm probably the type of guy that gets in the shower before I turn it on? Yes. I don't even know what that means, but it was funny. It was really funny. What does it mean, though? Uh, that you like, just... who typically gets in the shower before they turn the water on? I think I think you just meant that you're just kind of a, a guy that has strange habits. Is what I, I That's what I took it to dude, mean. I laughed, and I had to think about it about five minutes later. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm laughing at. I don't at. even recognize what we're doing. I here. really didn't, though. <laughs> I think that was my man D-Lo. I don't know if he had two or three E's. 
I think it was three. D Lo sounds like a three. Is that how I should say it? D- I don't even know why, but it's, it's technical, it's like, right? It's like Debo, right? Depending on how many, how long you say it, that's how you. Yeah, so it's like, whatever. You guys can miss me with this. I'm just getting ready for the PGA, man. We got we what, got went PGA out and watched today. A, went out and watched a little baseball. I did not get rained on. I was actually somebody did almost twist my cap backwards on the interstate. I, I I think people. I found myself extremely upset on how people manage to run into things on the interstate. Like, take some personal pride and don't put other people in harm's way. Mm. Just drive better. There's a lot of open space. There, there usually is, yeah. I mean, you have to... I mean, heaven forbid. I'm not even going to jinx myself. But, man, just try your best to pay attention. Just do a little better, guys. It's D-B-D, uh, D-B-N-D-O-T. That's right. Just how about do that? a little better. Man. Got a little bit better. A couple of sprinkles and people are like... Lose their mind. Avalanche! Although I will say, at one point, it th- that got pretty... Gnarly. Was it, man? Your boy was afraid to get out of his car. I sat there for a minute. <laughs> it was like four fifty. I'm like, yeah, I'm not budget. I was gonna take a minute here. Hey, I took about eight of them. <laughs> it was a little rough out there. Eight it of was... them. I just was praying for no hail. It's freaking bats. Hey. And I, and I'm downtown. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, I don't. I don't even. I don't, it was. So I was at the. Did I see we got over? Did we get an inch and a quarter? In like 30 minutes. Yeah. Because it all happened in a hurry. Yeah, I was kidding. There was, so I don't I don't even know how to describe this, but there's, you know, like drainage systems at the CHI. Mm-hmm. And so they've got one of those like giant, like it's essentially what a gutter on your house would be, but it's like the size of a manhole cover coming out of the building. And that thing was shooting out like a fire hose. There that was thing so, wet? That, it was. It was really wet. There was a ton of rain. It was super wet. Super duper. And that thing I don't even recognize what was happening there. It was it was rough. It was brutal. Yeah. Um, weather. It, it was all right though. We got uh, we got it in. I think that affected the first uh, match crowd a little bit. It was uh, a L- little late arriving for you. Yeah, it was a little late arriving, but and I also think obviously it was you were going to have a super Omaha heavy crowd, so they kind of you said super super Nova that's, heavy that's, crowd. That's cute. I, I've said super like four times in the last three minutes. It's just a, even... there's adjectives that people use that, based on their background, that they're more inclined to use. You'd be a lot more inclined to use super than I would. No, it's, like, it's like a yogurt thing or what? <laughs> no, just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the other half? It's so like that, a... that joke is taken on legs. Has it? I'll hear that a couple times around town. Really? Mm-hmm. Um... Not picking up any yogurt, are you? <laughs> well, if I was, it would be Greek. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. He's you know, doing some good well, things. You know, like that white people yogurt, huh? Yeah, I've been uh you I'm in like... the co- I'm in the cottage cheese now. Does yeah, that count? I don't like cottage cheese. Don't yeah, put so that crap on me. Low seasoning, low cottage cheese, couple eggs, it's a little the... salt and pepper, you bake it, and I can get bread. So you can do cottage cheese with well, your I, eggs. I'm That's gonna, a... I'm gonna bash a huge sandwich at some point. Yeah. I just don't know if it's gonna be the salmon asiago cheese bagel Ooh. or like a legit Little King Gandolfo's 28 foot long. You got, I mean, yeah, go Gandolfo's. Man, I'm envisioning it. You just, the other day it woke me up right out of my sleep. That's how you know you need a cheat day, is. <laughs> and it's not even going to be a good one. It's just going to, I want a sandwich. Yeah, guys need bread. I just, I, and I don't even, I, not even a I don't guy. even, yeah, I don't yeah. even historically eat bread like that. It just, but I, I do want a sandwich. It's the sandwich. So that's good. It's not like you're not just going to eat like a loaf of bread or you're like, yeah, it's the sandwich that you're missing. So do you not, if you came over right now, there's like five unopened bags of chips in my house. Nobody else eating chips in the house either. I mean, maybe Zoe okay. for, well, for maybe, lunch. Maybe. Like yeah. they're just chilling. It pains me that they're wasting. So we went and finally we got, we got the individually packaged ones. So that we're not like wasting chips. Oh, were you a waster too? Yeah, kind of. And well, are you one of those guys that sets the chips down too hard and at the end they're, they're all crumbles? And I'm it not. Me I crazy. will say, and I don't mean to throw my wife under the bus here, but I'm going to. Gosh, I'd love to. She real bad at closing the chip bags. I can't stand it. And so we do, we get end up with some stale chips. Yeah. And I also, and I have a 
portion control problem, full disclosure. So if I open a bag of chips, like it's real hard for me to stop. Mm -hmm. So we do the little bags of chips now. So it's, you know, I can eat the whole thing and just be done. Oh yeah. I like that. You know, it's, yeah, I'm trying to find problems in my, or not problems in my solution, solutions to my problems the other way around. Yeah. I, I like am pretty it. good at finding problems too. I, I went to, uh, so I told you I stocked my guy that goes to, um, farmer's market mm -hmm. for, for the pork rinds. So I found a little itty bitty place. Did you finally track them down? Yeah, there's a couple. Yeah. So I went to this place. I didn't he said the name, so and I didn't think much of it. Mm -hmm. So I Googled it. I was like, oh my gosh, what are the odds? So it's this place called Makers Collective. It's a little local boutique. Okay. And it is right next to two places that take extremely good care of me. Choo Choo's, which arguably has some of the best gizzards in the city. Okay. And this place called Cakes that's actually doing cakes. cupcakes for Caleb's graduation. Nice. Yeah. Two two big fans. So as I'm like pulling in, I was like, oh my gosh. So you're just like right in the sweet spot. I'm like, this is in my wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah. And so and you know, I had to call Fred back and talk to him some more because he's gonna be my bestie. He's oh, like, it's Fred the pork rinds guy? Yeah, it's and I think it's Fred's pork rinds. Okay. And he's like, you know, and he's older, but tell me this wouldn't just light you up like a Christmas tree. My man was like, Shane, you, you looking, you listening? He's like, hey, you know what makes mine different? Like, I'm the only guy north of the Mason-Dixon line that knows about these pork rinds. And I was, <laughs> so I'm like on the edge of my seat in the car. I'm like, come on, Bluetooth, give me more. And he's like, here's the secret. I cook them in lard. So that protein, I mean, you're getting 17, 18 grams of I said, say no more. You That's have the it. only reason I like chicharrones. You have it's it. the <laughs> protein. It's the protein, Frederique. And I was hooked. Mm. And I guess what I had last night for dinner. Pork rind nachos? Yes, I did. Yeah. Because everybody else wanted to be cute and go get some street tacos next door because Micah wanted to pick for his extra birthday. Everybody. Extra birthday. <laughs> well, yeah. Ace was mom on Monday and we had him on the weekend. Oh, so we gotcha. went so I took him to Koji on Sunday. That but place it was is legit. Dude, it is so good. It is flipping incredible. There's this I can't even remember the name of it. I'm gonna have to look it up. Bonsai? Break. No, it's like a it's a is it, is it in a bow bun? No, those are good too, though. Is is it yakitori? Is it on a stick? The yakitori is incredible. Also, it's fantastic. There's a. Um, is it the is it the bolognese? It's and a it's a bolognese. Uh, yeah, that's how. In that I'm about to send you this picture of Zoe just knocking. You know who got her hooked on that? Coach Rule. Coach Rule. Yeah. Coach Rule. So <laughs> after we after like that week, I'm telling you, this little girl was running around talking about she wants bologna and dumplings. <laughs> What's happening? I told him on Saturday, I said, man, I can't afford this girl. Take her back. <laughs> TK just just in the chat, just I love lard. So good for you, TK. <laughs> Dude, I have I have tallow. I have my own bacon fat. Tallow's the good stuff. I have ghee. Yeah. Not Gordon. Uh Guy Lafleur. <laughs> well done. That's all I got. That's it. <laughs> Shane's like, then you're, then Shane, you're, like you're in his gas. dumb Gene Wilder reference yesterday, Carnegie. <laughs> no, Shane, stay in your room, Andrew. <laughs> like the hall, oh, no, sh like Michael Anthony Hall. He's just brimming because the Avs got Carna one last night. Carnegie <laughs> Mellon University, no, oh, okay, not even remotely that smart. I think my uncle taught there for a while. Shocker, he's a smart guy. <laughs> he works, he's the one that works at NASA. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not, not raising a lot of dummies over there, are you? Not an idiot. <laughs> Shane, were you tickled over your abs last night? I was tickled. About as giddy as, as Ravi and his supernovas? How about Coach Kuhn losing her mind? Oh, man. I don't I thought her. that bun was going to come out. I was like, hey, Simba Donna. <laughs> Donna Simba now. Donna Summer. So you got to keep that thing tight. <laughs> uh, uh, Shane, what was your level of elation? Was it like a 10? Uh, if I was a Husker fan, I'd just be coming hoping that the ball's not on the ground. Well, that puck was fine in the back of the net, that's for sure. You know the funniest thing? So yesterday, after you left, Shane is out there, and he's, he's like, 
he, he, I think I asked him, I was like, how do you feel about the abs? And he's like, oh, they're going to lose. Obviously, I want to win. He's like, oh, they're going to lose. They're going to lose big. He's like, or they're going to win big. I don't know. And I'm like, it's a typical Shane. Incredible analysis, Shane. Yeah, <laughs> well, let, let me, let me, let me the, explain the, my the analysis. King, the king and hedger. Then he goes, and then he goes, and then he goes, you can bet on it. And I was like, which one? You gave me both results. <laughs> here, here was my thought process behind oh, that. Oh, this ought to be interesting. Okay, so I can't wait. Hit me with your best shot. Monday's Fire Monday's away. game was Stop was it. was probably the worst game that I've ever heard for an Avalanche game, and I've heard like a thousand. The five one The Monday game where they yep. lost after after they lost their player, or whatever. I mean, it was bad. It was it was to the point to where I didn't even want to listen to halfway through because it was just it was just the downer of the game. You could tell that the uh, you could tell that the players weren't even playing. I mean, there was no will to just do anything. So, so the thought process was, you know, what's going through their mind, or, or is this is this something that they're going to rally behind? Like typically, you would rally behind, like if your coach was fired or something like that, or if uh, if if you lost your star player due to an injury, you might rally rally behind that. And you and you typically have a game that you come back, and that game you typically win but i didn't see that Stop in this saying game. typically i didn't see that in this game though and, and, and but they did it though i you know I, shane I, typically when you make a prediction you don't make both predictions that's all i meant hey they could win or they Forgive could me. or they could or lose, they could lose. Uh, i don't know but he, it wasn't even like oh they could go either way he was he was adamant that they were going to lose and he's like but on the other hand <laughs> yeah, right. i was like what are we what are we even doing do your abs come back and win the series they're not going to come back and win the series, but they might. They might. Uh, <laughs> you never know. I, I I do know one thing. What's that? And I picked them to win the uh, Lord Lord Stanley's Cup. I much would have rather have seen Florida get rid of Boston the other day. Mm, yeah. I mean, I don't <laughs> don't want to give them lifelines, man. We don't like it. Surprise, yeah. surprise. You we're going to get you, the lineup in, in the first segment you again. you got to kill the head of the snake. Right? Coming up at 845, Brian Edwards, our Vegas insider. Coming up at 9, Michael Bruns, Husker 24-7. And then PGA Championship Week, we've got John Rathaus, former caddy on the tour and also host of the Quiet Please podcast. And, and don't forget, coming up on Friday, the Avs may or may not win. Cool, thank you. That's the lineup for today. We'll be back with more Herd at Sports Radio here on AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're back here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. He's getting extra salty with me this morning. Yeah, uh, kind of. Uh, we... <laughs> I think that should be about right. It throws me off every time you do that. It's not good. Yeah, no, I know. I've had salt water before. It's terrible. It's pretty subpar. My was this? A, have we talked about this? What? Your mom? Yeah, Being a kid with like the sore throat. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a that's a thing. Yeah, I, I have like PTSD from it though because it was terrible. That's not even old wives' tale. Like I think that actually worked for a little bit. It would make sense. Like salt kind of cleanses things out. If you got a sore throat, there's probably some like abrasions in there. Probably helps out a little bit. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, <laughs> as many people know. Despite where I'm from and what I look like, yeah, not yeah, a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> um, much to the chagrin of many people on that side of my family. Shock, uh, chagrin, and dismay. Oh, man, you just do radio. <laughs> yeah. There's no it's, failure in sports. Exactly. It's like, I'm sorry, what's your advanced yeah, degree yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, yes, there is, Giannis. You guys being at home already, that was an epic failure. There's, it's a wrong question. You asked me the same question last year, Eric. Eric. You asked me the same question last year, Eric. So speaking of failure in sports, I'm glad you brought this up. Shame on you, Eric. I'm glad you brought this up. So uh, our guy, I'm going to call him our guy, Coach Rule. He, uh, he's your guy, at least. I'm just going to tag along and pretend oh, do like your thing. we're friends. Um, do your he's thing. been doing his little media rounds. Mm -hmm. You know, he started with us, which was the best one, obviously. But he was on Greg McElroy's show uh, either yesterday or two days ago. I don't remember when. But he harped on a topic and I harped on a topic that he said in passing. That's more accurate because he doesn't really harp on things very often. He kind of just says them and moves on. But then I dwell on them for days at a time because that's what I do. To this day. To this day. 
Um, he's not fighting this weekend, but the guy that he had. Yeah, we'll talk to Kevin Ioli tomorrow. Resurrect on himself did is fighting this weekend. Um, so he he said this phrase to to Greg McElroy, who I gotta say does not look like he played Division One quarterback. Like if you just showed him to me on no. the screen, I'd be like, that's that's one of those yeah. guys that never played. It's Jason Garrett two point uh, Yes, yes. Anyway, he's o- Opie Taylor. <laughs> Does got a little. It looks like you could be Ron Howard. Come on, ma. You look like you could be Ron Howard out there. Um, is that the guy who played Opie? Ron mm-hmm. Howard. Okay, mm-hmm. that's it's a little not current Ron Howard. A little before my time. Shane's still with us, right? Yeah. Yeah, he did not age well. His uh, his daughter directs now too. Bryce Dallas. She acts some too, but she's a director. Bryce Dallas. Is that a real name? Yeah, Bryce Dallas uh, Howard. Bryce Dallas. Yeah. She's the girl in the Jurassic World movies. Yes, she is. The redhead girl in the Jurassic World movies. But she oh, directs a lot of stuff. She's cool. Yeah, she's and she's actually a really good director. She does some cool stuff. Um, I only know because she did some Star Wars stuff because I'm a nerd. But Yeah, that's the quantifier. Well, she, she does cool stuff. She did Star Wars. It's cool to me. <laughs> I like uh, it. Okay. Anyway. Anybody that does Star Wars is cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're not doing Star Wars, you need to step your game up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> anyway. So Coach Rule's talking about this. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, I don't know why I don't even oh, recognize what we're doing. Oh man, he's so cool. So why, he, why is he cool? I don't know, man. Did you see how he solved that Rubik's cube? <laughs> yeah, okay. Listen, different people think different stuff is cool. All right. Just like people are nerds about different stuff. Mm-hmm. Like you know, a lot of people are like, you think nerd, you think like academic or whatever. It's like, yeah. make no mistake. Like we are sports nerds. Yeah, you can't do this job and not be sure. a sports nerd. At least not for do sure. it very well. So like everybody's a nerd about something. Yeah. It just we happen to be nerds about sports. Uh, Jessica and I on Sportsnet nightly last night. We're talking about like track, mm-hmm. track and field. It's like, is this cool? I mean, I we like did track, like a, I like I like track and field. Impromptu twelve minutes on tennis yesterday. So <laughs> well, you hit me with with a deep cut like Isner, underachieving. I don't know that he was underachieving for a skill set. I do though. think he was kind of better than you gave him. I mean, yeah, he was a boomer, but he he was. I'm not even going to get into this. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to get into this because you're gonna. No, we'll take it off air. It's fine. Um, <laughs> You'd be 12 minutes later to be like, it will. I'll, I want to serve got, in volley. I want, and you didn't even get to your guy. Coach rule yet. Yeah. Um, so so McElroy kind of asks him how you balance the. Uh, trying to clean up the turnovers from last year because obviously that's a huge issue on the offense and still trying to strike those big plays, Mm -hmm. right? How do you balance theoretically taking more risks by trying to get the big plays and yet minimizing the the, the, the negative, the downside of that, right? And the answer that Coach Rule gave, I, he said different versions of this and It's been kicking around my head for months now, if I'm being honest. But he said, if you trust your training, you do what what we train you to do, we will live with the results, Mm -hmm. right? It's not about the turnovers themselves. It's about the fact that the turnovers came because guys didn't fall back on their training. It's because the, the turnovers came because they weren't they didn't do what they were taught to do, right? And this is where I'm going to get, speaking of being nerdy, this is where I'm going to get nerdy on you, right? So I take this all the way back and I connect it to the if we die, we die thing, right? It's a hard line. It's a great line. But what does it actually mean, right? Hey, if we go out there and do things the way we know we're supposed to be able to do things and we go out there and we do things to the best of our ability and we trust our training and the results still aren't what we want, we can live with that. Mm -hmm. If we die, we die. And what it reminded me of was there's the, there's this old Hindu story about a warrior who's on a battlefield. You can laugh. It's fine. It's fine. And he's fighting like members of his other family. It's like a civil war situation. And he's like very, con- he's like very concerned about going and like potentially killing people he knows and cares about and loves, right? And so one of the Hindu gods is talking to him. He goes, "Hey, like, do your duty 
and let the results be what they are. And he says this line, which is an even harder line than if we die, we die. It's, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. And what he's saying is, it sounds like he's saying this like really doom and gloom line, but what he's telling the warrior is like, hey, you do your duty. You're not the one that brings death. Mm-hmm. I am, mm-hmm. right? You do your, the process, and then fate will be decided on its own. You do what you can control and live with the results. Uh, we, I, I just, it's music to my ears. Um, Cause it's all we ever talk about. It, it's, I'm like that in life. I'm like that coaching. I'm certainly like that competing. That's why I tell our guys, man, listen, train in, train in such a way where time doesn't matter. Like the results will be what they will. Mm-hmm. Let's, just, let's just lay it on the line. But you have to put yourself in a certain position to be able to sleep easy at night sans the results. And that's knowing that your training got you to where you needed you to everything be. Everything you could. Uh, that's it. And And – and we have this thing now in our house where I don't even say, sometimes I'll say best wishes, mm-hmm. but my go-to, because it encompasses everything I believe in, is I just say, leave it out there. Mm. That's it. Short, sweet, to the point. Leave it out there. You know, sometimes um, I'm, I'm, kind, I'm, a, I'm a touch guy, so sometimes like, you know, like let's say Christian will come over and he may have turf in his helmet or mm-hmm. something. So I'll, you know, I'll rub his eyes, use my thumbs. I'll look at him right in his eyes and I'll say, "Hey, you got any any more in the tank? Mm-hmm. Any more in the tank?" Yes, coach. Hey, empty it. Mm-hmm. Right, like just real, because all all that I really care about is if 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 you leave it out there and there's nothing more, then I'm cool. Yeah, I just can't. The results will be what they are, and you. You know, there's certain things that just get under my skin, mm-hmm. right? And, like, when you sell yourself short, don't give yourself the opportunity because you can't get out of your way. That's one. Mm-hmm. Like, come on now. And the other thing is is when you half-ass it. Like, you're not even guaranteed anything other than being in that moment. You might as well maximize. The only thing you guarantee yourself when you do that is, and and, and this is from somebody who used to do this, so I, I can say this like with full confidence. You're guaranteeing, guaranteeing yourself that you have an excuse if it didn't go your way. Yeah, I, right. That's right. what you, and that's the goal there. Right. When people don't leave it out there, they want to say like, "Oh, if I had gone a little harder." They give themselves so, so, an out. Sometimes why people don't dive for balls. Or, yeah. Yeah, because you know, hey, next time you want to give yourself an out if it I, doesn't go your way. I'm gonna play a clip for you coming out from McElroy too. That will land the plane for you right there. Coming up next, Morgan at Sports Radio. Welcome back. It is Herd at Sports Radio. We're live. You are looking live at the Herd at Studio, the great Pillar Exteriors Studio. Robbie was getting all philosophical when he wasn't doing his Hindu folklore. He was referencing an interview that parts of an interview that I listen. I he finds he by Coach Rule just finds more ways to creatively say the points that he drives home all the time. It's in the consistency of the message, right? He was with Greg McElroy. Shane, the, the question was, and you kind of alluded to it, mm-hmm. but we're going to give it some context because we'll play it in its entirety. What, how The fine line between navigating wanting chunk plays and to not turn the ball over. This is what it sounded like real time. Like You turn it over, you're coming out. Uh, you turn it over, you're not repping with the ones. I mean, but then again, you're kind of cutting the guys off at the knees because then they are going to be resistant to take chances. They're going to be hesitant to push the ball into a tight window. You might take away their playmaking ability if they're so consumed with not making a mistake. So how do you make sure that limiting turnovers is a huge priority while also encouraging your young guys, and in some cases your, your freshman quarterbacks, to still make the plays that led them to become a five-star prospect coming out of high school. Yeah, no doubt, man. It, it's it's when you look, you know, Brian Billick years ago came up with a spat, a stat. He called it toxic differential. Other people sometimes call it double you know, double positive. But basically, you know, hey, we want to win the explosive play battle, but also the turnover battle. Like, yeah, if you win one without the other, you can be really conservative, and you'll you you won't beat yourself, but you won't be explosive. And 
you can be really explosive, but also beat yourself. And so finding that balance. And I think it's really uh, the key to coaching today is getting players to not worry about the result, but just stay in the moment. Like, hey, how, how does this play work? You know, you're throwing four verticals, man. Like, it's a one high post safety. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna take three in a hitch, man, and we're ripping the seam off opposite the lead of the safety. And you know, if, if your guys are doing what they're trained to do, um, then we'll live with the results. If all of a sudden now instead of taking three in a hitch and they take three and two hitches, or they pump fake and try to run it and they throw, that, that's where we're trying to coach that away. You know, we're trying to say. Hey, do exactly what you're trained to do and, and trust yourself. And, you know, you get out on a scramble, try to make a big play, throw the ball down the field, throw the ball out, you know, along the sideline, man, but don't, don't throw the ball back across your body. That's not what we're trained to do. And so um, I had the, you know, I had the unfortunate, uh, unfortunate pleasure of coaching against Tom Brady when I was in Carolina. And it's like, man, you, you'd sit there and to me, you'd be like, Hey, okay, we're going to play cover two. He's going to, you know, he's going to check the ball down. We know that he's going to play cover two here. He's going to check the ball down. It's like, he just absolutely frustrated you with his precision yeah. and his execution. And so I don't want our players playing in fear. I want them to play with unbelievable confidence, but the confidence has to come from their ex execution, their precision, knowing that they're, they're going to do in the moment exactly what they're trained to do and do it with no fear. It's, it's 100% how I think. I think it's how, <clears throat> it's how you have to coach it, right? Because – you you can you can become bogged down with the what ifs and the contingencies. Now they could do this and they could do that, and 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 that, there's a really really fine line, right? If we're playing, you know, Millard South or Bellevue West or or even Millard North, I'll go back to the days. You know, Millard North, we had some good success against them for a while, where they weren't scoring any rushing touchdowns. Mm -hmm. I think we played them three times in a row, and they didn't score one rushing touchdown. And we said. This is what we're willing to live with. Mm -hmm. It's going to be X, Y, and Z. This is These are the non-negotiables. Let's just do this. This is how we're going to train. If they do something else, you tip your cap and you move on. Mm -hmm. Right? If we're playing WS, hey, listen, if he wants to make some more middle-of-the-field throws, tip your cap. We don't think he wants to live between the hashes vertically, so we're going to defend it this way mm -hmm. right if we don't think a guy can scrap so i say all that to say you take you you take you're negating the impact of a negative play by already empowering your players to say they sometimes are just going to make a play mm -hmm. if it's something that we didn't prepare against or that's kind of out of the norm hey that's sports mm -hmm. right they got a chalk they got a dry erase board too or somebody just makes an incredible Some, somebody could just effort, make a play right like and yeah. i hear they're i told you i said this in passing but just to let you know that everybody says it hey, coach cooper sitting in meetings we i'm in the back listening mm -hmm. he's talking to his dbs he's like hey the name of the day the name of the game today is 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 compete I want to compete with every ball in the air. If somebody makes a play and it's a 50-50 ball and we're in good shape and good position and we played our technique, hand the ball to the official, line up and snap it again, let's go play ball. You guys with me? And I was just thinking to myself, it that's freeing because some people, if depending on your mindset, mm -hmm. you could hear, hey, man, if we give up a play, we give up a play. Yeah, that's not it. It's not what he said. <laughs> So if you do everything right, yeah. If 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 and if, the results aren't what you want, yep, we can live with that. That that's the thing. Which I mean, and and sometimes, co you know, coaches will be a little over the top sometimes. They'll say, "Well, we don't want to give up any." You can't do you. You can't play it that way because what you instill in your players is, like, as if soon they as make, they give up something, then they, then they did failed. Some, then they did something wrong. Yeah. As soon as you give up anything, you fail. That's and that's right. And that's a terrible mindset to be in. Nobody wants to play like that. Right? That's the perfectionist mindset. Right, that's right. why. We, we, we give up a backside skinny mm -hmm. and a three-by-one, and they run after the catch. Like, that's on us. Yeah. Right? Like, it now. But if somebody goes out, you everybody's in position, just goes out, high points the ball, makes a great play. You're like, hey, we were where we were supposed to be. That dude made a great play. It was a great throw by the quarterback. Yep. We're good. Yeah. You can live with that. I remember we got creased. We were playing Lincoln Southwest, and man, their tailback made a good or their tailback made a good play. And you know, he cut it back, and you know, our, our safety's supposed to get down in the box. He's a backside B gap guy, and he was held a little bit on the hash mm -hmm. B 
because two push so hard vertically. Like he basically was running him off. Mm-hmm. So I know why he was late getting down into the box. Mm-hmm. It, it's just it's just a tough read. Yeah. Right. And that dude could run. <laughs> yeah. And so you're like. You know, I remember Cam Cozio made about 15,000 plays against us mm-hmm. a couple years ago from Millard South. I mean, you could say, yeah, you know, we missed some tackles, but guess what? That guy's good, too. Yeah. You were in good position. The defense was sound. He made a play, right? Like, like keep, that's life. Yeah. keep. There's a reason. <laughs> my buddy Brian used to always say, there's a reason there's positive yards in football. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, like, nobody's holding you. You're not holding anybody zero yards. It's, it's, just, it's just free. Now. Did, did I lose my mind when Flores, you know, the, the first touchdown that they threw? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the deep ball that he threw late when we put pressure on him and he couldn't step into it and he out threw our coverage? Okay, that's just a great player making a play, man. Don't that, get down on your daubers, man. It's a long – It's well, then it wasn't a long no. game. And then it was like nut-cutting time. But I'm like, hey, keep playing. Like, He's really, really good. He's gonna make those plays. We, you just, and there was one guy in the entire state that could make that throw. Yep, and, and, I, and I, he did. We didn't even bat an eye at it. Yeah, He's, because <laughs> we're some, just like we're just like, wow. Sometimes great players are gonna make great plays. And it, and I'm just like, the more your players believe that, mm-hmm. like the the better it is. It's like, what do we talk about with Coach Mack? Hey, if you're St. John's and you're going to make a living. I was just going to bring up Coach Creighton's defense. You're gonna And you're going to make a living hitting those tough pull-ups, mid-range, those mid-range range shots. Jumpers. Okay. And people ask me all the time. And listen, I get frustrated too. I'm like, hey, like, let's just show him a different look, whatever. But I get the principle of it where it goes, you know, people ask me all the time, like, okay, well, what happens? I'm like, hey, they're not going to give up anything at the rim. They're not going to give up threes. And they're like, well, what happens if they shoot fifty percent from mid range? I was like, then Creighton loses. Yeah, and you have to be okay with that. And and like I, if that's your philosophy. You have to be okay. With it, it it does two things. It keeps you consistent in what it is that you do, mm-hmm. and um, it you don't look over your shoulder. Mm-hmm. N- Nebraska forever has looked over their shoulder. Mm-hmm. That's why they can't get it. It's the main reason. How are you supposed to get out of your own way when you're never looking forward? Yeah, they're just hey, always j- waiting. J- just go try to gain ground. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey, Robbie, go out there and touch the blade on that motorboat over there at Cabela's. But keep looking at me. Keep looking back at me the whole time. Oh, man, you're going to look like. Hard to drive when you're looking in the rearview mirror. And that's been Nebraska, yeah. right? What's this? What's the psychological edge that that Iowa has? We, we, we make fun of it. But you know what they do? They wait for you to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. They're going to do what they do, and they're going to do it for a long time. Mm-hmm. And eventually, m- more times than not, you, 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 you can't keep up with, with what they're doing because you're going you're gonna to make a mistake. And most people – They don't like – it's uncomfortable for people to do that. Most people just don't have the stomach. For yeah, that. they just – they don't. In, in bo- on both sides of it, right? He's talking about Tom Brady and now, hey, if you're running cover two – he will just precision you to death. Yeah. How underneath. does one? How does all of a sudden now right. Julian Edelman is killing me or James White? Right. You just because yeah, James White has what fifteen receptions in a Super Bowl. Because you know what defenses will say? Hey, we can't take it all away. We'll give up the little intermediate yeah. stick. We'll give up that stick. Right. We'll rally and come tackle. Because most and they'll do it twelve times on the drive. Because most <laughs> most teams, most quarterbacks, most coaches do not have the stomach to just take what the defense gives them the entire game. And on the other side of things, if you do, most defenses don't have the stomach to keep allowing it to happen, so they get out of what they do, and then all of a sudden, boom, you get creased. Yeah, or boom, I, you get beat over the top. I've been, I, I Lord no, I've been victim to that. It's hard to watch. It's hard to just sit there and watch Tom Brady or, 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 or Zane Floors or whoever make 12 straight completions I remember the feeling when Bellevue West made an adjustment at the half in the state championship. Jalen Bradley went bananas in the second half. Mm-hmm. They figured it out. And it was a little too late for us to change it on the fly. Mm-hmm. And we had to live with the results. And it was ugly. I, I think he just scored again. It's hard to stomach. <laughs> it really can be. Believe me, it was. Coming up next, we got more Hurt Sports Radio. Kicking off hour number two here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula here on the Pillar Exterior Stage. And reminding you, I think we already brought up the NDOT this morning, but 
loosely. Yeah, in passing, but a, a, a more direct reminder, make sure you make that seatbelt click. It saves lives and prevents injuries, but only when worn properly. Make it click. A message from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Um, I wanted to get into, you know, we had the uh, obviously the big. You want me to give a quick update? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, PGA quick update. Luke Donald won under through five. Uh, tied for the lead with old Dougie Kim. That's G-H-I. Not G. Uh, Matt Wallace won under through four. Uh, some notables. Rory won under through one. Tweet, tweet. Out of the gates. Uh, <laughs> Xander Shoffley won under through three. Victor Hoblin. Uh, who also birdied the first hole. Number one must be playing fairly easy, at least out of the gates. Not ideal weather, though. Uh, it is 59 degrees uh, at old Louisville, Kentucky. 55% uh, chance of precip. You're getting some gust anywhere from 12 to 24. Where's my guy Eldrick at this morning? Eldrick is plus one through three. Okay, that's not terrible. No. no. I don't. I don't know. You know, We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be a long, it's gonna be a long day. I think Dustin Johnson even through two. Keegan Bradley, well, Adam Scott just hanging. Ooh, Tiger Woods with the tweet tweet back to even. We love it. We love to see it. Um, we were talking about. It's like the pump in crowd noise, bird noise at the Masters. <laughs> Didn't I sound like a bird, Shane? Tweet, oh, I see. He's just like a bird. It was incredible. I thought there was a bird in the studio. It's weird, isn't no. it? I, I could do like, that pretty well. I was tweet like, tweet. Oh, oh is there a bird in here? What's going on? Yeah, I detected those. Got yeah, some, some flying around in here. <laughs> um, like one of those geese that ran into the building the other day. Dunk. Uh, <laughs> Back in the day. It's really yeah. more of a honk than a tweet from, a, from he, a goose. Oh, he broke his neck. He was he was stumbling, bumbling. I, she must, uh, I tried to break his neck. <laughs> we played against the guy that said that. I don't know what that's from. Yeah, this dude was a natural born killer. That's what he was. Um, We were... Talking yesterday a little bit off air. Severe said he hopes Tigers plus a million by the end of the day. Why does he hate Tigers? So oh, much? he just does. It. We, I. I used to try to fight him over it, but like most things, I relented. It just. He's just. He's a hater. Ah, uh, he's particular. He's particular about what he likes and what he doesn't like. Mm, he is very particular, and he I. Lo he loves him some Star Wars. He said, "What's your friend's name? That's uh, the director, Bryce Dallas Howard." Not my friend. I don't know her personally. Hello, friend. Uh, she did some stuff with The Mandalorian, which yeah. I actually watched with Micah. That, Hello, the friend. Mandalorian was very good. I was I was a big fan. Shane, did you ground? Uh, is my little friend that likes to um, be on my side when I say something funny, is she on punishment? <laughs> there she is. Yeah. Where, is yeah. she, where has she been? I don't know. Probably in school, I would hope. School. You just set up your own drops now, Shane. You're just like I'm saying. Tired. I worked hard at school. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you did work that hard at school, Shane. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> Shane. I think that's a shot at your aptitude. I am old. Not your aptitude, just a GPA. <laughs> that's kind of a misnomer. It really is. Yeah, it's kind I'm of too bad. exhausted from being. I mean, it's like this. Yesterday. It's like the standardized test. Like it's not a good act. It's like. It's not a good measurement of anything. It's just how good you are taking the standardized you test. Fall back on your training, Robbie. Right? I I did not train for the standardized test. I, I did okay. I think it's harder to set up your own drops than it is to play off of yours. No, it's actually easier because you're literally talking about the thing that you want to set a drop for. So, but it has to fit, right? I think you're talking timing. Yeah, timing. Uh, surprise, surprise. Don't defend him. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Like I'm caught in the middle of something. Some people got a little surprised yesterday when we saw we got a couple Netflix NFL. Hello, you you seem mad about this. I, I'm okay. I like mad is a little harsh. I I just think disappointed. Yeah. Why? I, I guess why? I mean, like you've got be, Netflix. Be, What's the matter to you? Because not everybody that well, yes and no. I, I just think. Like on a holiday, man, if I'm sitting around, I don't want to have to get on Netflix. I want to be able to watch television. It's, and it, is it magnified because it's the chefs? Yeah, sure. But you're going to put the Chiefs and the Steelers yeah. on Netflix on Christmas. Yeah. Because they paid a premium for it. Yeah, it's just something just doesn't seem right. Now, I'm, I'm definitely watching. Well, so that's the thing. 
It doesn't matter if it sits right. It doesn't matter in, in the NFL size, right? I'm not, it's whatever to me because I, it really doesn't bother me at all because I've already, you know, I'm, I'll just find wherever the game is, it, you know, but as long as it doesn't prohibit people from watching or doesn't prohibit a certain percentage of people from watching so where it becomes an actual problem, why they're going to take the highest bidder. And Netflix obviously wants to break into sports and live events. We've seen them do it. There was uh, the roast. Yeah, there was the roast. Uh, there was a, a tennis match with Nadal and somebody. There was um, the the uh, Tyson uh, Paul fights coming up on Netflix. Like this is obviously a space that they're investing in and trying to get involved in. And if you're the NFL, it's like, yeah, we'll take your money because people, the NFL knows whether it's Amazon Prime, whether it's Netflix, whether it's Peacock, whatever it is, that the NFL forces people to make purchases. Yeah, I wasn't enamored like with their schedule. They 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 cross over with the NFC East, mm-hmm. the Steelers, so that's fine. Uh, they'll open with Atlanta, which will be tricky. But, I mean, the Chiefs on Christmas, that is that's, going, fine. that's going to be huge. I'm just glad it's at our place. Yeah. I mean, because December 25th in Pittsburgh, I'm hoping for bad weather. Yeah. So it seems like my team plays a lot of my friends. Team. I remember when the Steelers played the Saints uh, on the holiday. And I was just like, oh, me and Severe, we're going to break bread together, mm. but not be in the same room. And now the, the 200 million Chiefs fans that that I know will be sending a little Christmas hate their way. Yeah, there's a lot of Chiefs fans out here. And yeah. they, they've you gotten, can disrespect the Chiefs. They've gotten a lot louder over it, the last few years. It would just be nice. And I, I listen, it's at home, so I'm happy about that. But Chiefs kind of got a bad deal with their, the back end of their schedule. Yeah. I mean, they're not at home a ton. No, they. it's a little bit rough going. Surprised. Surprise, surprised? Yeah, I mean, they usually get the. I mean, they get a. They get a. They get some breaks usually. Yeah. Uh, there's a. I was, you know, I was looking at the 49ers schedule. I didn't memorize or anything because we got some time still. But there's a stretch. I think it's after week nine where they've got a little bit of a tough go. Um, that they're going to be on some short rest when other teams are on. You know, either coming off of a Thursday, so they've got the. Extra, so coming off your bye. Yeah. So it's after that. Yeah, so you got Tampa, Seattle, Green Bay, Buffalo, Chicago. The Tampa game, they're going to be in a good spot for, but um, it's those next three, I think, where it, they've – Yeah, you got Seattle at the house, and then you're at Green Bay and at Buffalo. Yeah, like that's Ooh, a tough go. In December. Yeah. That's all right. At Green Bay, at Buffalo in December. Purdy's used to cutting that wind in, uh, in Ames. That's right, baby. So he won't be 17-4 and four then, but – no, nah, I'll probably be like 22 to what was it, 24 and four, 24 and five. Wow. I mean, I don't know. Are you guys going to be like that? I, I really don't know. NFL is going to be wide open. I'm a year. little, I'm a little concerned. Why? I just, I'm a nervous person in general. I don't have a good reason for it. Uh, shoot, I'm optimistic. I, I, about like, the Steelers? Yeah. You have less reason for optimism than I do. <sighs> True. But <laughs> I also think that's fine. I mean, it's I I I mean, deep down, I'm hoping T. Higgins implodes. I think the the Bengals, I just they got to replace some things, man. And I'm also worried about Joe Burrow's being like staying healthy, like that. I'm con- I'm getting concerned there, and and I get it, right? The the Ravens, I, I don't know if you heard this, but they got Derrick Henry, and they're gonna be able to run the ball late. Did they get Derrick Henry from three years ago, or they got today's Derrick Henry? I don't know. Instead of rushing for 178 yards a game, maybe they'll go for 188. Whoa. But um, I, I feel – Is Lamar well, going to be able to throw when he has to? And for once, I hope you're right, mm-hmm. and that Deshaun Watson and whoever plays quarterback in Cleveland is bad. I mean, the, his track record of late yep, would indicate – Yep, yep, that's enough. That's I'm enough. Just, you know, I, want to end on happy, got, I want to end on a happy note talking to you, you about see that. He got a, you see he got a tattoo? Oh, gosh. What is it? Well, it's a huge back piece, but one of it's it's a it's an empty, like an un... Like there's no year or anything on it. A Super Bowl ring tattoo oh, on his back. It's huge. Oh, well. Or just, you know, just... You got, you got to draw it into existence. Some people... I don't think that's what people mean when they say manifesting. <laughs> I don't know. You're such a hater. Should I get like should I get like my desired salary tattooed on my arm or yeah, something? Yeah, then go get it. Well, may, may constant be. reminder how you gotta go get it. You gotta go get that bag. Uh let's get to 
Kim, she agrees with Damon, so I really don't want to take this call, but I guess we will anyway. <laughs> wow. She dropped uh, off, so you're not going to take Oh, call. thank God. Uh, <laughs> what did she agree with me about, Shane? <laughs> she didn't really agree with you. She was just saying she, you needed to have the other side where a, uh, a uh, female disagrees with you, considering the drop plane was the girl agreeing with you. Oh, Lord. So why? So, Shane, see, that's what you get for not taking the call. Why did he type that up the way that he yep. did? It's okay. I'm just. It says Kim agreeing with Damon I on the screen. I, Shane, I want you to thicken your skin up a little bit. He may go off here. In I'm a just, <laughs> like, it says Kim agreeing with Damon. On, well, what am I supposed to think that means? I don't know that she probably agrees with me. That's what well. I, let's let's just find out if she agrees with. That's you. where I'm led. To let's, let's agree. Let's find out right you now. You mad? I'm just. Or, let's let's see if let's see if. Kim agrees Shane, with what I put up there I'm on the screen. I'm at your mercy at what you put on the screen. I'm just happy you he just spelled to, it correctly. You just need to read it right. Although it's hard to screw up. Kim, Kim agreeing with Damon. How am I supposed to screw that up? I don't know. Let's ask Kim. Kim, you on the phone here? Well, I, I, why would anybody ever think I would agree with Damon? I know. <laughs> I was it caught because me that's up. literally what Shane believe put on me. The screen. It caught me off guard too. Well, here's the thing, though, because I must have missed something the other day. You. Take the sauce off the pasta. Oh, you take the sauce goodness. off the meat. Yes. What in the world? I, so even your dish, Kim, in studio, like I wipe yeah. the meatballs down because <sighs> I didn't know if I was. <laughs> how, how, how old are you? Oh my! So what are you? So ap apparently that's an age thing. I don't get why that's an age thing i was getting crushed like why is that an well, age you thing? should be crushed <laughs> okay that was homemade sauce dude what, listen what, what what's wrong with you i get it okay that was a that was a gift right you were being kind you brought something to the studio yeah i wanted to try yeah. it i like meat i'm not a huge pasta person so i wanted to try it at this particular place, we were having lunch in Lincoln. There were all these nice trays of pasta, different versions, right? There was like lobster sure. ravioli. There was meatballs. There was shrimp. And I wanted all the meat. So I waited until everybody had gone through. I let it sit like two hours. Which I appreciate the, I appreciate the consideration. I, I did. I, I let do. it sit two hours. So then I went through and I picked out all the meat of every tray. And the meatballs look so good. All I did was take a napkin and wipe the sauce off. And everybody makes it seem like it was the worst thing in the world that I did and that I'm 12. Like, I don't understand. Like, what did I do wrong? What if I don't oh, like sauce? You, I, I knew you. By the way, I knew you didn't like pasta that much. So yeah. That's why I made meatballs. And I knew you didn't really like red sauce. But And I ate about a fat. Like, I can eat a lot of meatballs, Kim. Like I'm just I had five the other day. They were huge. Hey, that's a drop, by the way, Shane. Can you keep that drop? But but so can you think that's weird? No, I mean, we all have our things. Right? Okay, okay. Let me ask you this. And be you, honest. Be one hundred percent honest. You just have to be one hundred percent honest. Okay. Have you ever like hey, okay. you're you're social, you 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 got all these hobnobs, you socialize, you hobnob with all these socialites and stuff. <laughs> So I could see you like at the Lexus club and you're doing your thing and they like have brisket out and it's a little over sauce. So you like just you, you wipe you, you wipe a little sauce off a slice of brisket or you scrape some barbecue sauce off of chicken or you get too much mustard on your hamburger. So you, you've never done that. Yes, not with my napkin though. Oh, so now I will say to... the napkin is what's hold, what is what's really. What else was I supposed here. to use? I wanted it all off. It was a huge meat. A ball. butter knife. You kind of just you know. So do you so. know what that? It, so okay, full disclosure. I thought about it, but I would have had to have turned it with my hand and scrape along at the same time. Here, here, I got a, I got a life hack for you. All right, it was a big meatball. Skewer it with like a fork, uh -huh. and then do a little rotisserie deal. Oh, Turn okay. it that way. You're not like holding okay. your meatball yeah. on your hand, dude. I had yeah. chi I had China at silverware. You people are killing me. I I thought I was resourceful. <laughs> Apparently, I'm an eight year old. You know why it's an age thing, Damon? Though why? Because when you're younger, you, people tend to be pickier. Well, I my pal. I've, I forgot where <laughs> I brought my my palate is a, is 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 enlarged since I was eight or nine. <laughs> 
You couldn't, you couldn't even figure out the word to use there. Because it's, <laughs> I wanted to say expansive, but people get on me. So I was trying to dumb it down and I didn't know how to dumb it down. So I, I don't, I appreciated that you, you right I try, I appreciate that you tried the meatballs. I, that was, they look you know, so sorry. good. They were like the side. I said golf ball. It was more like a tennis ball. I, I mean, would say golf ball is not a huge meatball. They, they were good. Though. Tennis they, balls are big listen, meatball. They were amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what makes them really good? And this is my giveaway here. What's that? I don't use breadcrumbs, so they're not perfectly round. Me neither. But I sacrificed the breadcrumbs to put in ricotta cheese. Oh, <laughs> bless your heart. The cheese. So there's something about it not perfectly. <laughs> I'm like that with breakfast sausage. I feel like Seems it like should be a little misshapen. Authentic. Seems like it's more like a homemade deal and not like uh, like a mass-produced deal. Yeah. All right, Kim. I, I quit trying to make the perfectly round meatball because I'm too much time. I'm, I'm, if, I'm, if you want a perfectly round meatball, go 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 for filler by all means. <laughs> Fill that baby up with filler. Thanks, Kim. Appreciate, <laughs> appreciate it, Kim. Have a great week, gentlemen. And thank you for not agreeing with Damon, despite what. Yeah, what apparently Shane nobody was, does. What Shane was trying to lead me to believe. Oh over my here. goodness. Michael said, nobody could ever confuse you for a 12 year old. You're a solid 13 year old teenager. <laughs> Okay. It's a lot of hate. He man. was texting me too he, about Tiger, and he's like, eh, he's a creep or whatever. <laughs> All right, man, whatever. So let's get over that. I'm just, you know, I, that poll, I can't get over that. What? A lot of fibbing going on in that poll. So, dude, it was 90 some percent. It was. You got work to that poll. You did. Not a chance those people are telling us. So that. I'll be, full disclosure, I, I know your wife has. It's the no, that wasn't who I bet she's wiped something down. I don't know, guaranteed. She doesn't. Shane just did it the other day. What and, Shane? Not, and not that I want to be in that company, but I'll say is that that's the advocate you're looking for over there. Okay. So you, my guy that can't even label the phone. I guarantee you that dude right there that's getting ready to do some work here. Yeah, he got a fillet of fish at McDonald's, and the tartar <laughs> sauce was too sloppy, and the cheese was on crooked. <laughs> that dude took the bun off and wiped down the tartar sauce. He either redistributed it or didn't eat it and ate the or, or, or you know threw the tartar sauce away and ate the fillet of fish. So my big hang up, I'm, if I'm being honest, is the napkin. I'm I, worried I, about the napkin I used, residue. I used what I had. Man. I get that. I do. And I wanted to pull it back as soon as I said it out loud. Yeah. I knew but you would winning. I knew you wouldn't understand what happened. Yeah, probably not. I just I want it to be quick. I, I, I didn't want to be like that dude. Yeah. It's okay. I get my nuts. I needed context, and you had it's it's cool. Man. I don't really believe in context or accuracy. I believe in jokes, <laughs> and it was apparently it was a good joke. <laughs> hey, so you know what's funny about that schedule? What's that? What if something happens to cousins? Like, heaven forbid, in training camp or preseason, or if he's just not healthy yet, and Penix starts against the Steelers, and Atlanta wins. Do you know? Do you know the irony in that? Penix beating my Steelers in the opener. I would, because you love Penix, like yes, I do. Yes, I do. You've got a couple quarterbacks. I imagine you don't love that much. Love's a little strong. I said don't love. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I didn't say hate. I said you don't love. Yeah, I, I will tolerate. You're hoping. I am a tolerant person, right? You're, you're hoping that you know that that your culture and your Mike Tomlin can squeeze the cringiness out of. Russ Wilson. Wait, I did you are you kind of being dismissive of Tom, like what do you mean? I love my Mike Tom like no word. I'm saying that you you're hoping the culture can make Russell Wilson less of a tough hang. <laughs> Am I wrong? Like that's that's the hope here, right? Yes. Yes. yes, continually. Yeah, always. You gotta be continually to this day. If you have your do you have your dark horse yet or you wanna wait? I haven't got there yet. You, you know who has kind of a sneaky, tough schedule. I'm too busy looking at the the rest differential and the 49ers being like one of the worst. So I usually years. I usually do that with Nebraska. I don't do that so much in in football in NFL yeah. because Nebraska has they, they have four games where they get their opponent coming off, off a bye. bye. Yeah, which is tough. But two of them, Nebraska is coming off a bye as well. Yeah. So it's but you, but you got two there that are you don't love. Yeah. Right. Which is not ideal. But yeah, it's um, Husker X and O sent us this chart where 
49ers have the worst rest difference of any opponent since. What's, what's their away schedule late? It's not good. Well, we, we I mean, we just went through the at Green Bay, at Buffalo. Um, no, that was for you. Oh, who are you talking about? Chiefs. Oh, he's a Chiefs guy. Gotcha. I'll look it up. I thought you were talking about the 49ers. Still. No, he's a Chiefs guy. Yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't see that one yet. Because we'll... I looked and I was like, well, I mean, the weather is going to be a push either way. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kansas City, Pittsburgh, late December. Yeah, I mean, neither one. Yeah, of there's no real advantage ideal there. Ideal there. But I just wondered where that was being played. And I looked at Kansas City and they're not at home very much. Yeah, so late they've got. This is a terrible setup for a schedule. Uh, they go at Bills mid-November, then at Panthers. They've got Raiders and Chargers at home. They go at Browns, at Steelers, at Broncos are the last couple. So it's not terrible. It's, no, the, there was a, there was just that away stretch. I was like, it doesn't seem like they're at home very much. Yeah, they've only got a couple in a row away. It's it's not awful. They've got. So we're the second of three on the road. No, you're the fir- you're the second of three out of four. Okay. So it's Browns at on the road, Texans at home, Steelers on the road, Broncos on the road. Okay. So they I, go three got, out of their last four on the road. Like I said, I typically only get into that with um I just try to get ahead of the narrative because you know sometimes our fan base would be like, Oh man, they're getting such and such off a bye. We always mm-hmm. get such and such off a bye. So I'm just like, All right, let me see when these Yeah, you gotta dig into it. Sounds like Kansas City's pre uh, pre set up for that schedule then. Zip, having, it, zip it Raider fan. Having uh having the tougher games at home, you know, at the end of the season there. <laughs> I'm just it. saying, he NFL setting it. the Kansas City Chiefs up. Man, thank you. How's, Appreciate that. You you gonna have who's gonna throw the ball to Brock Bowers? Yeah, really. Anybody? Yeah. Noonan? Hey, so Shane, you're hey, you go you're starting 0 and 2. You're at the Chargers. You're at Baltimore. Nothing new. You get Carolina at home. Cleveland will be a toss up, even though it's at home. Then you go to Denver and you get us at home. Us, like I play for the Steelers. Like me and D V, you get us at home? Yeah. Exactly. Come do the show from your house? Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Give them nothing. That was offered to us once. Somebody's kitchen. Really? Yeah. Why? Why would we, why would you do that? Why did Sarah offer Shane? You don't remember? She's like, oh yeah, you guys can do it from our kitchen. I was like, that'd be weird. Is Dookie Clint's wife? Yeah, that'd be weird. I don't I don't think I want to do that. Just kind of set up. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Have Clint cooking some cooking some breakfast for you? You yep. think you think Clint can cook? I bet he's got some bad barbecue. He took the sauce off of. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not not sure I'm gonna hang out with anybody named Dookie Clint. He's a, he's a he's a blue devil. I know, but it makes me always think of poop, like taking a Dookie. <laughs> that's 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 where I, that's where my head goes. Uh, we'll be back with more Herd Out Sports Radio coming up next. We're halfway through the show here on Herd Out Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula here on the pillar exterior stage. And, you know, we were talking about supernovas earlier. You're going to have one last chance to see him on Saturday. I said, maybe. No, that's champagne supernova. This is Omaha supernova. After they win, we'll be busting out champagne. Shane, you get, get, your, right. get your guy. You're right. You're right. When you're right, you're right. You're not right about wiping down the meat, but you are right about the champagne supernovas. Oh, my Lord. After they win <laughs> the ship on Saturday, make sure you get out, go to provolleyball.com or supernovas.com to get tickets to see Omaha play for the first ever Pro Volleyball Federation Championship. That's Saturday at 3.30. Make sure you go out and get your tickets, provolleyball.com, supernovas.com. I will be there. You should be too. What's up? I, 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 I'm, I'm in disbelief. I'm not going to regurgitate it. I just... I, I do think you guys are being disingenuous i'm really not like i promise you it's a lie man <laughs> it is what have i never admitted to something that Be- was because embarrassing? you're not thinking i am i'm li- i am thinking and i took some shots listen i had to have a guy question my toughness my quote-unquote masculinity and he's buzzed <laughs> after two Nine percent alcohol by volume IPAs, and you're questioning my fortitude. 
Like what did I tell you're I six didn't six. Your fortitude. You're oh, no, six six two seventy. Yeah, and you're slurring over two IPAs. Like, like really? Yeah. So I I can't I can't. The I, direction the whole thing went got weird to me. I thought it was funny. I think you're an idiot. That's it. I wasn't questioning people's <laughs> fortitude. I did think it was a little bit funny when people were like that serial killer behavior. I thought that was a little funny. Um, but like to me, it was a joke, and then people got weird with it. And I don't even know what to do there. Some of your teammates got involved, and I was like, I don't they're, even they're, they're idiots too. I was like, I don't even recognize what we're doing here. Just taking just taking shots. Um my it's, it's fine. I legitimately and I'm and you know, I admit embarrassing stuff on air all the time. I am not like I I have no shame. I don't care. So if I had done this, I would tell you. Yeah. Even after this point. I think you're just forgetting. I mean, maybe, but I I legitimately can't I may, maybe. I, may, maybe. <laughs> I can't think of a scenario in which I'd be like, "Ah, maybe. I need to wipe this off." You ever, you, ever put, you ever put too much mustard on a hot dog? I don't even put anything on a hot dog. Of course. Like, oh, you're impossible. <laughs> now, like, there's a chance I just wouldn't eat it. So, guess what? You're at a game. You put too much ketchup on a hot dog. What are you going to do? You're going to take the napkin. And you're going to be like. Whoosh. No, I'm just, I don't put anything on hot dogs. Okay. I never put anything on hot dogs. Well, 75% of the 90% that were lying on that pole did. Bro, that's fair. I'm not, I can't speak for those people because they got weird on me, and I don't know what happened there. Of course not. D did you? Um, got weird. <laughs> so you realize, since you like to keep scoreboard, you realize Kool-Aid Steve gave you a full game and a half on Nebraska, Colorado. Yeah. Or not Nebraska, Colorado. Nebraska's win total. Yeah. A full game and a half. Yeah. If he's right, I'm, I'm just going to tell you. I'll send him whatever he wants. We'll never hear the end of it. Yeah, I probably won't take his calls anymore. <laughs> <laughs> a full. I will. I will pay up. I'm not going to welch on a bet. I will pay up, but I may never take his calls again. But uh, you're winning. I mean, so which was more <laughs> on the surface? And I'm totally not setting this up because if he's right, I I I may leave the state. Um, I have to really think about that. Yeah, I I may I may just. Well, you know out. what I would do? I I because I told Brett that I told my buddy this yesterday i would go to central i would move to central city yeah I, I would just live with them okay big central city guy yes it's fair yeah are you guys going because yeah. kind of i can't but i can't um you do you <laughs> it's be a nice place i mean listen i i got love they got a great dairy queen i love our good beef I love our friends in Central Nebraska. But listen, I, you know, he I, gave I you a know. full game. I guess us, because somehow I got roped into this too. Because I know emphatically, I said I'll take that. I'll take that bet. 100%. When he said six, hundred percent, I'll take it. Seven and a half seems kind of chunky, though. At least high? to me. Uh, the right. I get you had to give it the hook, and six and a half would have been low. too too low. Yeah. Well, and the other thing with Vegas is. That Nebraska win total is always going to get bumped by one because Nebraska fans. Not, that's right. not true though, because they've never. Vegas is right every year. Yeah, every year. But Nebraska fans typically hammer the over, and so they you you usually. What did I just it. say? And that's why Vegas is always right. But they also can give it an extra game high to give themselves more room on the lower end to go the under because they know Nebraska fans will still bet the over. Yeah. No, I'm with you. You're dang right. That's what I mean. They say they get an extra. That's game. my guy, Oklahoma. At least he still texts. Where's Don Juan and Art? Art yeah, I thought you were supposed to track those down, Shano. Shane's on Don Juan. I got Art. All right. Speed the two under. I just wanted to say I've been saying that for five years. I know. I know, Don. Oh. And boxing. I don't know. He he likes boxing, too. Do okay. your thing, man. Shock, Shock the, the world. world baby. Maybe we can talk to him on Monday after we see what happens with Furry and Usyk. If you say Furry one more time, we can't be friends. <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness! Exactly. He's got the you know he's got the hairy back. He's a he's a furry fury. Did you see his dad headbutt your boy the other day? Man, that whole family is little, out there. Whole family's but, built a little different. So well, do you know who? Because you saw all the the win totals. Mm -hmm. Do you know who's gonna be way better than we think? Who? Rutgers. What was that number? I think seven and a half. I got to go back and you look. You think at that's it. low? 
is that not higher than you? Rutgers, Nebraska, and USC, I think, have the same win total. The USC one, I, I think you're right. I thought it – I told you. the Wait, so, okay, hold on. So are you saying – you think the win total is accurate or you think it's low and we just don't aren't giving them enough credit. We I think we aren't giving Okay, I misunderstood Rutgers enough credit. I misunderstood what you were saying. I think they're going to be pretty good. I mean, I listen, I Shano's a good coach. I'm I'm not going to doubt his ability to put together a Wait, good football who? team. Wait. Great Shano. Oh. I thought you said something. I sound like you said Shano. I was like, "Who? Great Shano?" Shano? I don't know. Is this like a like a repercussions repercussions thing? I don't know. What's that? How do you is Greg Schiano? How do you say his name? That's right. That's, that's what right. I'm saying. That's right. Do you know who says that's right? That's right. EJ who? Barthel. Does he? Oh, I, it's hard for me to not pick up on it. You just kind of. It's an affirmation to having conversation. That's right. <laughs> it's hard for me to not do. Yeah, you're gonna turn into like. A mix between EJ and 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 Denzel. He, he's great. I wanted to accidentally bump into him on the road in St. Louis, like because he's got to go recruit uh, Jabarion Parker, mm -hmm. who really likes him. And I was like, man, my sister's in St. Louis. My old co-host is in St. Louis. I said, you know, my nephew is at Cardinal Ritter. He's like, man, let's make it happen, Captain. I was like, I may never Wait, come who, back. What, what old co-host in St. Louis? Andrew. Oh, that's right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I just talked to him the other day. I told him. <laughs> Is this, this what we're on? <laughs> hey, I. so if he's you're still, not watching in the street, you were, works your there. eyebrow was so high. I was so confused. <laughs> you're like. I was like, I thought all are those. Are you feeling good? You feeling okay? What are your vibes? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I. He said, who's, oh, who's no. in St. Louis? I'm an idiot. I was, I literally just talked to him. Hey, am I crazy or did he not say Shano? Be like S-H-A-W-N-O. -S did mean, you say Shano? No, I said me. Shiano. Okay. Greg Shiano. Anyway. Who's in St. Louis, by the way? Oh, my gosh. I don't even it's know. It's a beer move. <laughs> That's honestly where my head was at. I was like, what? I don't. It's funny. You just skip right over the heck over Gary. You just go to Severe <laughs> like that. Well, I know where he is. Sindelar moved already? He's never done a show with Sindelar. This dude is foolish. I don't, I don't even recognize what we're doing. Are you feeling good? You feeling okay? What are your vibes? <laughs> Stop it. No, like, okay, out of the out of the out of your co-host though. The one that would just like pick up and move and not tell anybody is severe. One hundred percent. That's but what. He, but he would be in Atlas. He would be in Alaska. <laughs> yeah, he would be somewhere some, where there was some, no some, people some, around, someplace remote, like Montana, where he just didn't have to talk to anybody ever again. I don't again. know if he thinks he could function in Montana. <laughs> but he thinks he could function in Alaska. Um, a little different temperament. <laughs> is he more like an Idaho guy? Maybe <laughs> hang out in Boise. Where was the Unabomber? That's one place that's he's not. I, that's, that's one Idaho. place he's not going. Well, don't worry. He's I. I think he's dead, but he was definitely arrested. So you don't have to worry about him anymore. Oh, he's outro. Yeah, he's gone though. Yeah, I didn't know. You didn't know that he got he got arrested? No, oh, I knew he got arrested. I, I didn't know he was dead. I didn't know he was dead. I th maybe I might be wrong. Yeah. So Rutgers, is, I'm one low. Rutgers is six and a half. That's what I knew got my attention. So that seems low. Low. Seven and a half seemed right to me. Yeah. That's where I got confused. six and a half is low for Rutgers. You may want to take a look at that one. We'll take a look. Maybe uh, go visit our friends over at Warhorse. Or we're going to talk to our Vegas insider, Brian Edwards, next. We're back here wrapping up hour number two here on Herd Ass Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula here on the Pillar Exterior Stage. We are joined now by the one. And only Brian Edwards, our Vegas insider. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. It's a good addition, Shane. B, what's going on? What's happening, fellas? Did you guys see Derek Lewis last weekend? Yeah, he, I, I, I stick around. I'm here for the Derek Lewis interviews. That, that's Me it. too. Me hey, too. Whatever he does now and says post game or post fight, he, he's the best. Straight money. Quote machine. We were arguing about some win totals. We weren't arguing, but um, we were debating about a few win totals. Are 
Do you have any, I know we talked about a few last week. Do you have any in the big 10 that I could throw at you just so we could debate or are you not ready yet? Cause I don't want to throw you a curveball. Right. I, I, I'm not, I'm not quite there. I'm hoping there, these athletes, go ahead. There's one that, that is really, really interesting to me. And I'm thinking how they throw it out. Throw, throw, Ru- throw it Ru- out at me. Let me put Ru- it Ru- at six and a half. Okay. First off, I've heard, yeah, I saw my buddy commenting on their schedule and I'm pulling it up now. But if Kaliak, Ma- if Kaliak Manis from Minnesota has already been named their starting quarterback, I don't care how easy the schedule is. It's got to be under, but I'm pulling it up now. One second. I just, Kaliak <laughs> Manis. Kaliak Manis. Oh my gosh, really? I mean, did y'all watch the Nebraska? Did y'all watch the Nebraska Minnesota game last year? Yeah, I watched them beat Nebraska. I mean, oh I my God, come on now, you watched them beat them uh, because of a fumble Nebraska had. Deep. Well, because like eight fumbles Nebraska had. To right. Well, yeah, that they're, is they're... funny. Be- oh man, Vegas okay. B. Edwards out on Cali Manis. Okay, but wait, Howard and Akron to start. That's a pretty good start right there. Ed yep. Vatek, L. Uh, Washington at home, L. At Nebraska, L. Wisconsin at home, L. No way. Uh, so two and four. Maybe they can beat UCLA at USC, U- L, UCLA's so win total is at five and a half. Okay, so I'm just saying two and five with a swing game on UCLA. We'll come back to that. Minnesota at home, the Caliac Manis Bowl. Oh boy, that's a swing game. Minnesota's, Minnesota's win total is I, like four and a half or five and a half. I, I'm I'm all in on the un, or not. I mean, yeah. is it like juiced on the under? I, I like under six and a half. I like under six and a half. <laughs> so why? Uh, all buddy, I know is Caliac well, why did Manis, your buddy, why, why did your buddy bring them up? Like, was he eyeballing them? Well, he was just talking about how easy the schedule was. I would have to uh, go back and pull it up. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry. I'll be hit I, me I, up later. Like, hit me up later on that because I'm curious to see what he what 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 you guys came up with. Well, I didn't really come up with anything other than if Kaliak Manis is their starter. I was just making a comment about Kaliak Manis. Really. <laughs> wow, big Kaliak Manis guy, Brian Edwards, joining us here. Um, all right, so we got some other early lines here in the NFL that you are kind of looking at a little bit. The Chiefs obviously are one of those. But before you get to kind of the individual, I guess in what circumstances would you actually put a play on a line in a game this early? Is that something you would actually do, or is it just, hey, I'll start keeping an eye on it now? Um, I might would put a little bit on it. Uh... Um, but like, but you're, I mean, you make a good point. I mean, we're going to have some ACL injuries, some sprained ankles. We're going to have all kinds of things between now and kickoff. Like, you know, what the Kelsey injury in the week one with the Lions and the Chiefs last year, you know, you probably felt like you had a good ticket with Kansas City. And then Kelsey goes out and they lose outright. Uh, but yeah, so I, I, I would, I like, uh, or, you know, I'm leaning the Chiefs uh, minus two and a half or three at home uh, to Baltimore. I mean, the most important thing they did during the offseason when they retained Chris Jones, but they've added Hollywood Brown, the receiver, um, you know, from Arizona. They get Xavier Worthy with the 4.2140. So they seem to be improved uh, at wide receiver. And then, um, you know, they're at home. So you'll be healthy, unlike the Detroit game last year. So I lean Chiefs, and then I lean Eagles. I love what the Eagles did in the offseason. They get the two best corners in the draft, Mitchell out of Toledo, uh, DeGene out of uh, Iowa, who can also help on special teams. Um, they, they brought back um, – uh, T.J. Gardner Johnson. After one year with the Lions, they get veteran Devin White, who's been a awesome linebacker for the Bucks forever. They got him on the cheap. Hopefully, he's got a, another year or two left in that gas tank. And um, you add Saquon, so I think it's a redemption year for Philly. And they're playing Braz- in Brazil to Green Bay on a Friday night, minus one or one and a half. So Eagles and um, and KC are my week one leans. Um, I just can't see KC. Giving like anything less than a key number just seems like at home a sucker bet, right? Like it's the Chiefs. 
Right. right? I mean, it's just like the you Super know. Bowl last year. I know they didn't. I know they didn't win till the last play, but come on. I mean, you're the underdog, and you. I mean, well, you look like a genius now, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the forty nine. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, it didn't look good. Up. It did. It didn't look good for a while. You know, I keep bringing up old stuff with me. Dude. I don't really need. You know, I've spent like the last four or five months like trying to. You know, get over that trauma of Patrick Mahomes having the ball last. I'm not really, you know, I don't need that hate in the middle of May right now, B. I, That's all right. Bad, B, he, he, I forgot. I didn't know you were a Niners fan, or I forgot. He, he just can't take it because twice already this morning he's brought up the quarterback situation in Pittsburgh. So he better be able to take as good as he dishes. I'm just. I you. Do you love the quarterback situation in Pittsburgh? That's no, all I asked. No, that's okay. Not, that's all I asked. Leading question. That's not what he said, B. <laughs> this dude. Yeah. I, I don't know about their quarterback situation either. And I did notice the Falcons minus three, but y'all know I don't trust my Falcons. Yeah, the that's a big, that's a big one. How, the, you know, that that, that is – I'm excited because I think the Falcons could be pretty good. Um, were you surprised to see the Timberwolves favored tonight? Yes, because if, if Conley's out, this thing's done. Mm. I mean – it's over if Conley's out. I mean, you saw how they brought, what, 40-plus double teams, and Ant could only get 15 shot attempts. I mean, if Conley plays, I still like Denver, but they got – I mean, Minnesota's obviously, you know, got a chance. If Conley's out, this thing's done, I think. I mean, I, I think it's it might get ugly tonight. Uh, I mean, Denver's just rolling right now. We all we all messed up really bad by not taking them at 17-1 to odds when they were down 0-2, and we had – Three days to think about it, <laughs> and I'm, wow. I'm cussing myself. Actually, that's that. what I'm doing. I I'm mean, cussing you, myself. You got to give yourself a little credit because that was about one of the worst performances we've ever seen from a good player when Jamal with Jamal Murray in Game Two. Like there was, <laughs> yeah. no. Now the, he's laid some turds before. It's like I know, he, but he looked like he didn't belong in the NBA <laughs> in that game. Like Nikhil Alexander hey, Andy, Walker. We, made it look like he was guarding his little brother. It was like, I'm, it was brutal. So I don't, I don't think you can really hate on yourself for not taking 17 to one after you're like, is Jamal Murray playing in China next year? Right. And, and he had a mil- mental meltdown that I don't That's, think we've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. yeah. He had yeah. this total That's breakdown it. where he's like this, yeah. this ninth grader trying to play varsity. And he's like, Oh, I'm not built for this. So I mean I don't I mean we don't know we don't know yet but I don't think Conley's playing and so I'm heavy on Denver tonight and I think you bet them first half game whatever I mean once we yeah. get confirmation on Conley those soleus injuries I or soleus I don't know how you say it those typically are are much more I think the questionable status on him is is disingenuous if I'm if yes. I'm being honest here based on the uh, kind of nature of that injury but. Is, so is there a number at which you you would just uh, stay away? I assume you're not betting Minnesota at any point, but is no. there a number on Denver you're just like, no, thank you, or is it just like, hey, give me any number, we will take that? Oh, if if I know Conley's out, prob- I'd lay probably three. But, I mean, hopefully, I mean, let's bet it now and don't, don't worry about <laughs> having to lay three. Fair enough. Um, hey, you've got that other Western Conference Finals game. You like a total in OKC versus Dallas, right? Yeah, um, I'm just going to go uh, under here. Uh, we got another under uh, last night. Uh, they've all gone under except for uh, – sorry, I'm pulling it up here – except for game two. And, um, yeah, so uh, last night we had uh, 196. We had 196 uh, in game four. We had 206 in game three. In game one we had two – well, 212 in that game and it's down to uh what 210 and a half or 210 but um yeah i'm gonna go under 210 there and don't ask me on the side i have no clue uh <laughs> this okc dallas game is like you know one game you're like god oh, donkic does not look healthy and then you're like wow they just dropped the casual game, 30 point triple double yep yep so i have no clue on the side i'll go on un- on that one and then you know Knicks Pacers tomorrow night it's kind of tough to figure uh might just look to live bet it or something I, I pre-game as of right now I, I I'm stumped hey B do you have any thoughts on boxing this weekend with Ushek and Fury 
I do not. I'm sure Fury's heavily favored, right? No, slight. It's minus Ooh. 125. Ooh. I well, know, we right? It's it's weird. Like it, I, Does he look in shape? I haven't Yeah, he look he looked good. Take take a look at that one for me. Be the the number doesn't seem right. Okay. All right, I'll does get he, back to you. Ever look in shape? Okay, buddy. No, he doesn't actually. That's our guy, Brian Edwards, Vegas Insider, MajorWager.com. Thank you, B. Thanks, B. Manus. Thanks, fellas. See ya. <laughs> Coming up next, Michael Braun, Oscar 24-7. We're back here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN, Omaha, ESPN, Tri-Cities, KFOR in Lincoln. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula here on the Pillar Exterior Stage. Got to remind you to go to Warhorse Sportsbook either at the casino in Lincoln or at Horseman's Park in Omaha. You got PGA Championship you can bet on. You got playoffs. You got we're starting to get some future lines out for NFL and NCAA football. If you're getting an itch, you want to put some money down on some football already, give yourself a chance to win. Totally understand, and so does Warhorse Sportsbook. It's the best place in Nebraska to place your sports bets. Go to warhorse.com, warhorsecasino.com slash sportsbook to get a full list of details and house rules. That's Warhorse Sportsbook. No bets, no glory. I'm betting on our next guest, Michael Brunts, Husker 24-7. Saying, saying something profound, that's your bet? He pretty much always does. Bruncey, what's going on, bud? Not much. That's a very professional uh, segue there, Robbie. That's nicely done. You know, I'm trying to get better at it and trying to trying to do this whole radio thing. DB throws me off a lot, but we're we're doing our best. Of course, it's it's me. <laughs> it's 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 all me, Bruncey. Like, I mean, I hear you're holding, me. you're holding, you're holding him back. I am. Back. I I am. I'm, I'm I'm struggling at this thing. Not very good at it. It's. I I just I got to stop tripping him up, Bruncey. How are we doing, man? We're in a much better frame of mind than we were probably two weeks ago, right? Uh, yeah, probably. Well, I mean, I, I think if you if you drew it up, right, and you said, "Hey, last week of the season," if you drew Christo it up, <laughs> if you drew Christo it up, <laughs> and uh, last week of the season you got a chance to win the Big Ten regular season championship, we'd have taken that. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's funny, too. Like, you, you look at – I always joke about this. You look at the preseason Big Ten coaches poll and, like, projected order of finish, and you have one team in Nebraska that was projected to finish fifth and Illinois, who wasn't even in the top six, um, at, at the top of the standings. So, it should be a fun weekend. Um, a lot of scoreboard watching. And yeah, I mean, you would have taken this. And if, you know, a month ago you said, you're going to be in a position to win the conference potentially outright. And oh, by the way, you're going to have two guys back in, in the pitching picture uh, that, that, you know, you weren't even counting on um, at the start of April. That's not bad. I mean, it, it's been a little bit of a bumpy ride at times, but. Rarely is, is college baseball a smooth ride. So, um, you know, you, you go up to Michigan State and take care of business and hope that maybe uh, karmically pr Purdue gives you something back for the, the stuff they pulled with the tarp a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> the, tar the infamous tarp game. Well played there, Brunson. I had forgotten all about. I, your, your level of intellectual petty is fantastic. It, it's like, <laughs> I, I think it's unparalleled. I don't even, and it's not even, it's not even that it was like in Nebraska. Like it, it's the, the, those kinds of shenanigans are just like, really? Like, come on. Like we can see what's going on here. Like you had a window, you didn't play it. So, you know, that, I mean, Nebraska got what they deserve that year, but um, I mean, it, it, we'll see if, you know, Purdue, Purdue's been a really tough out um, this, this year. So I don't, it, it's, I would not, uh, Pencil in two easy wins for Illinois in that one. Mm. Bruncey, as you kind of look at, you know, you mentioned some of the up and down nature of uh, of the season for Nebraska, especially uh, through a lot of April. And then, you know, just even recently, they, they you know, they dropped three in a row um, before getting those last two against Indiana. What is there something specific that you've seen? You're like, hey, I kind of feel better about. Is it just getting some better pitching performances out of guys, whether it's Jackson Brockett or having Christo get some good innings in relief. Is it, it is just as simple as like, Hey, some of the arms that need to be better have started being a little better. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the thing that has been missing for most of the year is that the, the, the Sunday starter or the midweek guy, it, it's, it's basically the same person in a lot of ways. Like, the guy that starts on Sunday is probably interchangeable with the guy that's probably a midweek guy who is somewhat interchangeable with a reliever that can give you multiple innings of relief. And Nebraska, for the most part this year, has not had the, the Rockets going five innings against Indiana was the second time all season they'd had a guy go five innings on Sunday. Mm. And, you know, the, the starting issues in midweeks are pretty well documented. And, you know, Jalen Worsley would give you two innings uh, of relief. But beyond that, there weren't a ton of guys in that bullpen that, that you would go to and say, okay, give me, give me two and a half or, you know, two, two and a third, which I think is what Caleb Clark gave him on Saturday against Indiana or the four innings that, that Drew Christo gave him on Sunday. Um, they just haven't had that. And then when you do, you don't have that, you're passing the bucket and it's always a bit precarious when you're passing the bucket, especially on a weekend. So um, yeah, I mean the, you know, Clark reemerging has been really important. Brockett's reemergence. I mean, that that's been a bit of a godsend because when you start looking towards what does the Big Ten tournament look like or, you know, what does anything look like beyond that? I mean, you, you have right now three starting options that you feel pretty good about. McConaughey has been great the last couple times out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that, that picture looks a heck of a lot different when you have three guys you can rely on starting on a, a regional weekend versus two and just kind of hoping that, you know, you can piece it together in a third game. When you actually look at the matchup with, with Michigan State, he, how, how important is or isn't it for Nebraska the way that Michigan State is built on the back end to start to get off on the right foot? Because it hasn't seemed to really matter because they've squandered some things late, but there there's some vulnerability there for Michigan State too. How, what are some keys for you if you're playing matchups? Yeah, well, you, you got to figure out a way to, to get some big hits. Um, you know, I, I think – Friday, backing up Sears, or on Thursday, sorry, I'm all screwed up on my days. Starting Thursday, um, you back up Sears with a couple early runs, you start feeling pretty good about things. That A, a quick start would be important, I think, just mm-hmm. given kind of the, the gravity of what's out there for the weekend. Um, you know, Michigan State's a really kind of hard team to wrap your, your arms around because – I mean, they, they lose 21-3 to three on Saturday last week against Minnesota. They get up 12-2 to two in the sixth inning and end up losing 15-12 on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And they, they have, have, in other games, given up a lot of runs as a staff. I think it's, it's close to eight. Their ERA as a group is close to eight. Um, so, you know, the, there's the potential for some, some offense for Nebraska there. But if you can kind of – you get a few more hits, score a few more runs. Uh, you know, I think the pitching will be okay. Um, but Michigan State's got plenty to play for too. You know, they're they're in a three-way tie for seventh. They're kind of playing for an opportunity to get to Omaha and get into the tournament. So, you know, you you would think that there'd be something for them to show up for. So, I just think for Nebraska, you gotta you gotta get the offense going a little bit early in the series, and. Uh, you know, just hope that your your three guys, your three starters, can uh, can give you some depth in those games. Bruns, what's the what's the value? Uh, is there a tangible value of finishing first ahead of Illinois versus finishing second going into the Big Ten tournament in your mind, or is it more just about making sure they're playing well heading into the postseason? <clears throat> um, I don't know. It, it would be. I think it would be a confidence builder for this team. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know that at any point this year you would say that they've kind of played their A baseball game. Mm. I mean, I, I, I would think the closest you could maybe say actually was this past weekend against Indiana. I mean, that, that had the feeling of a postseason weekend, mm. like with the crowds, a good team. Um, they've got some guys that can really hit. Um, and some decent arms. I mean, it, I felt like every guy that was coming out of that bullpen that weekend was like six four, some kid from like rural Indiana just pumping ninety seven, <laughs> and you know Nebraska handled it pretty well. So, 
you know, I, I think, you know, the, the standings piece of it's big. I mean, they, they want to, you know, win a championship. I don't know if, if, if a regular season championship kind of helps the raw, the, the resume a ton when it comes to selection time. But I mean, for as kind of up, up and down as the last month has been, that'd be a, uh, kind of a fun finish for this team to, to do enough to get up, get up, uh, and, and lift a trophy. So that matters. And then just playing good baseball going into the postseason. I mean, I, I, like I said, I think there's, I think there's still a lot out there for this team if they can just play some consistent baseball down the stretch here. Hey, so Bruncey, I, I asked you this last week and you kind of walked me through scenarios and how they'd like to maybe use the back end, but is Wordley is, is he your closer? Who's closing for Nebraska, in your opinion? Uh, I don't know. It, um, see, I, I, do you feel like we should, or is that part of the allure? <laughs> I don't know if it's a lure. Like, if it's, uh, <laughs> it's like what? I don't like. I don't have a good. Like, if you don't have a starting quarterback, if you if you have you know your quarterback by committee or your running back by committee, you don't have a starting running back. Is it that kind of a situation? I don't know. Um, but I the you know on Friday last week, their hope was is that Worley would be able to give them a two inning save. That that was what they wanted, and for whatever reason, Indiana just had him squared up right from the get go, and then that was kind of you know on to Plan B and C, and you know you you kept going on down the line. So you know I I don't know right now that they have one guy. I mean I I, I think they trust Worley in that situation. I think they trust dice to a degree um but beyond that i i don't know that there's not like a trevor hoffman or a Vera situation where it's like this is our guy we just got to get to this guy in the ninth I, I think it really is a little bit more situational and i think that to a degree has kind of caused some of the issues yeah i agree, uh, I agree. When, when they've when they when they've struggled to close games and it i mean it hasn't been that frequent i like five i think they've They've lost leads in five five games in the ninth, four games in the ninth, something like that. But I mean, when it when it goes south, it, it goes south. Um, and I, I think part of that is just you, you don't have that defined role, um, you know, coming out of the back of the bullpen. We're talking with Michael Brunt, Husker twenty four seven. Brunt's going to change gears here here on you a little bit as we um, obviously have. Husker baseball coming up starting today as they finish the regular season and then next week at the Big Ten tournament here in Omaha. Um, but I wanted to kind of talk about the the Nebraska football recruiting a little bit here. Obviously, they had a big uh, visitor weekend this past weekend. Um, you know, you you see that they're in the final two with Alabama for a for a Dawson Merritt. You know, David Sanders is is a super high five star. Um You've got a bunch of guys like Michael Terry seems to be uh, pretty interested in Nebraska. I mean, another five star, super high level athlete. Like, is this kind of the? Are you surprised at all at how many super high level guys Nebraska is in on right now? Because I'm a little, I don't know if taking a back's the right word, but I wasn't necessarily expecting it at this point in the process. If that makes sense, well, I think part of it, Bruncey, is the narrative that you know they only polish up fast three-star guys right like that's probably part of it right <laughs> no, yeah. probably yeah <laughs> i mean that's well i mean when you have the head coach saying that that's the type of program they are i mean you kind of you take them at their word a little bit i think two th you can have two things be true right i mean you can you can lean on your camps in the summer to find a kid that's got an offer from Penn and shows up and runs a four, four and, you know, long jump or broad jumps, almost 11 feet. Um, I mean, I, I think you can do that and you can also still get in the ring for, you know, a David Sanders or a Michael Terry. Um, you know, I, I think you can do both. Like I, 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 I don't know that the staff is not chasing stars uh, by any means. Like, I, I don't think that's a concern. I think they find guys that fit what they're looking for. And I mean, you know, Michael Terry fits a lot of what a lot of programs are looking for. So, um, you know, I, I, I think the thing I've been impressed by with the staff is that they've been able to build fast relationships 
with highly rated guys that have been recruited for a long time. I mean, like, you know, David Sanders has been recruited for a long time, like before Matt Rule was even at Nebraska. And that's why Nebraska was having to play catch up a little bit, but just getting him on campus and getting him to take a look, I, I think that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, you know, we, we always kind of say too, and we have been saying for a number of years, like, you know, Nebraska, I think is kind of primed to take off in terms of recruiting, as long as you can, you know, get, get the, the on-field piece of it go in the right direction too. So I don't know. It, it's interesting. Like when you kind of look back at past Nebraska staffs too, I mean, they, they've been able to kind of swing big, I think at times early in their, their coaching tenures yeah. um, and, and kind of take advantage of that upward momentum. And I think Matt Rule's staff is doing that to a degree too. I mean, I, I they feel it over there like they're, you know, going to, going to, going to break through sooner than later. And I think that that kind of comes across in the recruiting process too. So I guess my, my long answer to your question is, or short answer, I guess, is you can kind of do both. I mean, you can, you can find the hidden gems and they've done that. Um, I mean, they've got a couple of guys committed in the class right now that were, were kind of unknowns uh, for a lot of people and, you know, also get in there and battle for the, the type of recruit that everybody wants and is battling for. Ronty, when you're watching guys that they're uh, recruiting or have said yes, and even with Latif, um, it gave me kind of a visual to how they want to build this thing. Can you see from the outside looking in how they're trying to put these rosters together with in terms of being a developmental program? Like, let this guy do this for X amount of time. In the meantime, this guy can do this for this amount of time. Like, does it is it starting to take visual shape for you too as you look at the roster positions? Yeah, I mean, I I think uh, you know the the types of positions that they've gone heavy on too early on. I mean, I I think you you can see the priorities there too. I mean, you you look at the number of offensive linemen that they've taken in their first two classes, and you know, I, I think they saw a need there and also like, look, it's going to, it's going to be a couple of years before, <clears throat> you know, Grant Bricks is, is ready to go or, or Gibson Pyle or those guys that are going to be kind of that next wave of offensive linemen. And, you know, they did kind of the same thing with the defensive line too, where, you know, they moved some guys over, they got some guys that could be offensive linemen or defensive linemen. I mean, they kind of, it felt like they kind of started to build those positions first. And yeah, I mean, I, I think you're starting to kind of see what their vision is that, you know, I, the, the thing that I'm going to be curious about is, is the way that they kind of go forward with skill position players, because, you know, I, I think the ideal offense that they're going to run and they want to run was, was not what we saw last year. And I kind of wonder, you know, how, how closer they are now to being able to, to kind of have that ideal you know, balance of wide receivers and running backs and things like that. So, I mean, that, that, that kind of bears following, but I mean, I, I think you can kind of see the, the, even kind of the calendar that they work off of. I mean, like the, the camp season is going to be big again in June. I mean, I think they're going to try to find a guy or two from that post-grad camp that can come in and help them right away that nobody else is really aware of mm -hmm. kind of like the James Williams thing last year. So I, I, I've been impressed, I guess, that it seems like they've been able to kind of, you know, pull from a lot of different places and, and how they've been able to accumulate their talent and, and kind of make that uh, make that gumbo work, I guess. Bruns, do we give Donovan Rayola enough credit for the job he does as a recruiter? I know he started getting flowers as a coach over the last year or so because of the development of that line, but you mentioned some of the guys that he brought in last year grant bricks being the headliner and then you see some of the guys that they're in on this year do we need to start maybe talking a little bit of more about rayola and his the ability for him to connect with these high-end uh, offensive line prospects yeah i mean i i think i think he's done a really nice job i mean i i think you have to give credit to to you know coach rules done a really nice job with some of those guys too i mean they he was really key in, in the Grant Bricks recruitment, um, you know, in, in, in getting him to, you know, come to Nebraska. But if you look at the, the places where Nebraska seems to be getting a little bit more of a foothold with linemen, 
Um, you know, he's done a really nice job of getting Nebraska into Las, into Las Vegas again. Um, you know, Utah at times has been kind of a tough place for Nebraska to recruit. Um, and, and I think he's got Nebraska in a lot more recruiting conversations in that state uh, from just the, the time he spent there. I mean, he spent a ton of time uh, in Utah building relationships and getting around and kind of leveraging, you know, former Huskers that are coaching out there. And, you know, from talking to recruits and the, and the way that he just kind of builds that relationship, I mean, he just constantly texting guys, um, you know, really kind of going, going to bat for guys in some ways with, um, you know, whether or not he's an offerable guy or that kind of thing. I mean, Jason McChachock, for example, that were, you know, Donovan Rayola really kind of went to bat for, you know, him being a, a guy that Nebraska needed to get as an under the radar kid. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think, uh, He's kind of been a full-time assistant for going on three years now in Nebraska. I think he's he's definitely gotten more comfortable with the recruiting piece of it. And, I mean, even with the media, he, he just feels a lot more at ease um, than, than when he first got there. And I, I think he's kind of getting – kind of figuring out how uh, how he is as an assistant and what works and what doesn't. Yeah, I think in – the, and the interesting thing is because he doesn't always say a lot to us, I was a little taken aback, and I think that is the right word or term. He's got a ton of stroke, right? You you know, he doesn't talk a ton, but when he Mm -hmm. does or he has suggestions or he wants to do something, man, folks move, and they they move in a hurry. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, you've seen him at practice, Damon. I mean, there's not ever a – there's not ever any question about what he's trying to get across. I think it's probably Uh, a good way to – Good point. (laughs) <laughs> to say it i mean it's, it's funny we're like well we can't use that video can't use that, video. <laughs> can't use that. Um, like, do, do, do we have some uh we have some some ambient music that we can throw over the back of that practice clip so you can't hear what's going on but no i mean i i, I think uh when you talk to the players in his group um it's very clear that they respect the culture that he's built and it's been it's been kind of impressive to watch how that's kind of come together across two coaching staffs. I mean, you know, he's, he's had to fit in with a group that he didn't really know um, at all coming in. And, uh, you know, that they, they've got a good amount of depth in that offensive line group that they didn't have two years ago. Brunts, what, do, what level of confidence do you have in Nebraska's ability to close on, whether it's the offensive lineman or like a Michael Terry, but to close on some of these super high-level guys that they're taking swings on right now? Yeah, I mean, I I think they've got momentum with, you know, guys that are towards the top of their board. You mentioned Dawson Merritt. I mean, I, I think Nebraska has come. Yeah, they're right speeding there. That, speeding back into that recruitment. Um, and, I you know, I, I think it helps, too. His dad, you know, is a, is a football guy. He gets it. Um, a big, they're big on relationships, and that's something that, that Matt Rule's staff does really well. Um, you know, I, I think Nebraska, you, you look at Merritt. Um, you know, Shoal, who was in here as an official visitor, I think Nebraska's closed a lot of the gap with Auburn there, too, uh, for him. And, you know, it partially kind of depends on how long these guys are going to play out decisions. I mean, if you go into the fall with some of these guys, I think Nebraska has a chance to kind of back up the relationship piece of it with saying, OK, we're, we're you know, we're not just, you know, getting it done in June. We're going to, you know, get it done in the season when it matters, too. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's been a few recruitments already, too, with the staff that I, I, I would, uh, you know, going into it would not have said that Nebraska had a great chance, but they've been able to close the deal. Ja'Cory Barney is another example of that, where it's like a kid's got every reason to go to Miami. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Garrett McGuire and, and the staff did a great job of recruiting him and got, got that commitment. So I, I don't put anything past the staff. Um, you know, they're really aggressive recruiters and they're busy and a lot of that comes from from Matt Rule. Your your head coach has to set the pace for all that. Yeah. It's Michael Bruns, Husker 24-7. Bruncey, we appreciate it as always. Thanks, Bruns. Thanks, guys. Take care. We are back here on Herd Sports Radio AM 590 ESPN on my ESPN Tri Cities. We're live on KFOR and Lincoln. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula on the Pillar Exterior Stage. Good stuff there from our guy, Michael Brunts. You're making a funny face. What's happening? I did not know who was in the broadcast booth uh, at Valhalla. 
who is in the broadcast? Booth? I don't. I didn't recognize her. Oh, okay. I thought maybe uh, light skin know. with the two Afro puffs. Oh, I don't know who that is. Yeah, it doesn't ring a bell, does it? It does not ring a bell. So it it just got, it got my attention. But we're if getting you're looking for an update on the leaderboard. Would you like it? Yeah, I would love one. I was yeah, just because about to ask. because Mr. Shoffley has now taken the lead, and we're going to talk to our guy John Ra- uh, Rathaus here in just a uh, just a uh, one more segment. Yeah, uh, it's four under through eight. Uh, Spieth. We left him for dead. He said, ah, first day out. Not so Hoover fast, dead. my friend. Three under through five. Uh, Kim is three under through ten. Uh, Rory. In the hunt. Two under through six. In the hunt. Uh, Eldrick, in case you're wondering. El Tigre, uh, for all you non-Siberians out there, plus one over. Back to one over after getting even for a second. One on, yep, one it's, over. It's right. been, been a little grimy, a little grindy for him out there today. The weather, they get a nice cool day in, in Louisville. Yeah, it's not uh, too warm for uh, for good old Kentucky in mid May. Yeah, not bad. So maybe we need a little warmth, uh, depending do. on depending on who you're cheering for. Think you think Tiger does better when it's warm or when it's cool? I don't know. He's so old and beaten down. I don't know. I almost, so it's good to see Tony Fino off to a good start, too, 200 through four. I almost wonder with the back if you don't want it warmer out. Yeah. You T- know? Tyrell Hatton, 200 through four. Oh, Tyrell Hatton. Did it's you ever, re- you ever it's have, really Ricky Hatton, but yeah, I just remember them chanting that before he got. Big Ricky Hatton guy? No. <laughs> no. No, I thought. Don't even get me started. <laughs> I, 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 never, I never understood it. I, I never understood Which part? It. Like the infatuation with yep. him, people really loved, like so, like a certain segment of the population like, like his, really he, loved Ricky Hatton. And I mean, I, he was a huge draw. Like I just mm-hmm. remember that chant, right? Oh, Ricky Hatton! I, Before he got the check hook from Mayweather in the corner and got slipped. Yeah, and then he he fell off the face of the earth in a because hurry. I mean he fought, and then who got him right after that? Was it Pacquiao? Um, no. Who got Hatton right after Mayweather did, and people kept comparing the two. Yeah, I'm looking. Um, yeah, yeah. I talked to him last night. There was a little bit of baseball controversy, but I can't talk about it because I can't really corroborate it. Ooh. You know what I mean? I And it's just. So, like, you think you saw something, but you're not sure? No, there's just lots and lots of of, of stories about how a particular team that's playing in state has been capturing data. Mm. Um. And they're being accused of being Astros like, but I see, you know, and I, I know I, I hear what you guys are saying. I just, I need a little more, need a little more. Yeah. A little bit more. It's very intricate. Um, Ricky Hatton, it was Pacquiao. Was it? Mo- oh, yeah. It wasn't right after there were two fights in between, but it was Mayweather was his first career loss. Then Pacquiao. And then he lost one to a appears to be Eastern European fellow whose name I'm not going to try and pronounce. Yeah, there's a I, 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 I thought a lot of consonants in that name that I I thought it might have been Manny that got him. Do you want me to give it a try? Yeah. Via Cheslav. Oh, Sinchenko. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a bad loss. No, but it that was his last one. Yeah. He was Dunzo after that. Okay. He did take he did. He was off for like three and a half years between Pacquiao and Sinchenko, because it was 2009 to 2012. And he was almost going to be done. That's a bad gap. You don't want that there. That's too much time. It's a heck of a shot by Rory out of the sand. Two under on on number five. Speaking of boxing, though, our guy's coming up in August, right? Yeah. I don't love the locale, but where the uh, California. Oh, that's right. They're in L.A.? Yeah. Yeah. But we'll see. He's getting some of that... uh, that's Saudi money, right? That's yeah. the, who's financing it. Yep, get that bag. And he's um, it's got an, an agency now that he's working with too. From yeah. a business standpoint, I think that's really going to help. Going to help out. It's a lot. The, it's a lot more visible. Nice. I like it. Yeah. Let's Seems, get our let's get our guy paid. You only got a, you only got a couple more. Listen, you got to maximize earning and, and potential, it's, and it's going to be at fifty four. Mm, okay. He's got one or two biggies left. Yeah, let's do it. There's some there's some big fish at 54. Yeah, I just don't think at this stage in his career does he want to make anybody else's payday. Yeah. But you do want to cement your legacy too, so it's a fine line. You don't want to throw anybody a bone too soon and be have it be low risk for or high risk for you. Mm-hmm. But 
So 154 is junior middles. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, you know, Charlo may be out there. I don't think. That's the one that people talked about after. I don't think he wants to Errol. just give Boots Ennis the opportunity. Um, what is, I mean, what does he get out of that? Yeah, absolutely nothing. You know? And Boots has been a little, I wouldn't say disrespectful, but they don't have the best relationship either. Like Charlo's probably a big enough name that that at least makes sense for him financially. Yeah, and he talks enough too. And so the, like fight, you, the fight will sell in a hurry. Yeah, you would get good, uh, you'd get good pay-per-view numbers yeah. out of that. I don't know that Ennis is that guy. No. Oh. Well, uh, he is spectacular though. No, really? No, I just mean from a draw yeah. standpoint. What, what, what I want to see though is I'd like to see Lomachenko and Tank. You know, but Lomachenko is going to take some time off after yeah. beating him. Uh, Cambosis, man, there was not plus. That... I mean, he's got the war going on. Like, there's yeah, he's he's got a lot going on. But there was and not L- that and Loma's old now. I would say there was not that long ago that Lomachenko was thought of in a very different light than yeah. he is now. Yeah, in terms of his prowess. I mean, he, he had won three titles, three weight classes, in like fourteen fights. Mm-hmm. He Something was, ridiculous like that. It, it really was. I'm, and I'm not a Loma guy, but. No, but he was. Re- I mean, he was really, really. I good. would love to see Tank lose. Is to there somebody anybody at some else at one fifty four besides Charlo that you're interested in for our guy? I mean, maybe not fifty four, but I, I think he would entertain Canelo at a catchweight. So like what one fifty seven, one fifty sixty, maybe not. Because that would be a catchweight for Canelo, but um. Maybe sixty. Okay, Which is it sixty just true middle? It is, but oh, because Canelo's got, okay. got Canelo's yeah, got to yeah. come down. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So it's not like a catch weight in terms of class. Yeah, it's a catch weight for the. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I misunderstood what you were so saying. So it's like, which would be, it, that would be the biggest payday. That would be the biggest oh, fight you could make for sure. But you are talking about two weight classes. It's a big jump, and I mean, like. Could, Canelo's pretty good. Yeah, he is, especially I mean, that's, as a much, much bigger, yeah, he's a bigger, stronger dude. fighter. Yeah, although you wonder cutting that much weight. Yeah, what Canelo? You'd have to get into like the hydration clauses and stuff, but it would yeah. be you wouldn't want Canelo to be able to <laughs> bulk it, back up too much. It would be an incredible payday. Oh God, yeah. So, but he's I mean Canelo's fighting right now at one sixty eight. Yeah, which means he's probably walking around in the one eighties. And and Terrence could walk around easily in the in the high fifties, sixty. Yeah, but that's a I mean that's a big difference there yeah. still. That's a Canelo's a big dude. Yeah, for yeah, yes, he he's is. he's a he's a big guy. That's why it was interesting. Is this for Par coming back? I think, yeah yeah it is. Tiger's got about a four footer to save Par. That's longer than four foot, isn't it? Well, I don't know. Could you land between there? Jane could. That's about it's about five feet. Got it. Yeah, no, I. Oh come on, Shane. I mean, listen, just from a fan and from a Crawford getting his flower standpoint, like a Crawford Canelo fight would be. That's my dude. Um, a Crawford, that is my dude. A Crawford Canelo fight would be spectacular. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think. See how easy I got distracted. Yeah, he's a great baseball player. Who is that? Is is I won't put him out there because oh, gotcha. he's working, but his last name is Hendricks. Okay. Played at Miller South. New okay. Major League Baseball. What what era? Nineties. He's my age. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Hey, nuts. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I thought, whoa. Oh. What position did he play? Uh gosh, he was all over. Outfield. Yeah. Could play a little middle infield. Yeah. That's good, fine. Good dude. Like good ball player. What do you, yeah? Like, what do you need? Can you rake a little bit? Gritty. Yeah. Yeah. Tough, tough. Like we would fight tomorrow. Yeah, tough. <laughs> tough. I'm telling you, man. Tough, tough dude. Uh, you know, you like you like some of those. You need to. See. I do, man. I I like you like some grinders. I like. Guys. Yep, I do. I you like do. the unconventional scrappers. You like the grinders. I like the pretty boys for Shane. You big David Eckstein guy? No. <laughs> the guy broke my heart. I can't even believe you brought him up. <laughs> so who are you leaving for me? Flipping idiot. Why did he break your heart? Dude, when he's a card, oh my god! Oh, car- yeah. I always think of him as an angel. No, I always think no, of him as don't. an angel. See, that's why we can't have nice things, man. Why? Dude. David Eckstein, huh? I always think of him as like, an angel, like game winner, late innings. David no, Eckstein, you're right, or... you're right. I always think O2 angels. That's where I think David Eckstein. No, I got a different word for him. 
<laughs> Gritty? Grimy? <laughs> Tough? Yeah, all of those. Coming up next, we got John Rathaus. He's going to talk yeah. a little PGA Championship with us here <laughs> on Herd Out Sports Radio. We're here back, wrapping up the show here on Herd Out Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities, KFOR in Lincoln. I'm sure we're going to talk uh, in just a second here about some course conditions at the PGA Championship, but if the course at your house, and by course I mean yard, needs a little help with its conditions, you got to call our friends over at Durkin Designs. Whether you need some more extensive work, patios, retaining walls, fire or water features, trying to take that thing to the next level, or if you just need some run-of-the-mill cleanup, maintenance, that type of thing, Durkin Designs has you covered, and they do free estimates. So go ahead and give them a call at 402-779-4444. That's 402-779-4444 for a free estimate and to get some info. That's Durkin Designs. Joining us now to talk about PGA Championship uh, is former PGA caddy, current host of the Quiet Please podcast right here on the Herd Out Sports Network, John Rathaus. John, how are you, buddy? Morning, gentlemen. I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, we're hanging in there. I'm I'm just having to deal with Ravi, so it's basically one segment at a time, John, if you know what I well, mean. You only got 15 more minutes uh, left. Uh, today. It's like just I'm, I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in Grinding. there. I mean, hey, John likes me. You don't have you don't have to do this. I mean, come on. Um, <laughs> all right, John. So let's get right into this. Um, the PGA Championship. We got some guys getting going already. Shoffley at minus four, off to a good start. Is that a guy you look at and say, hey, he's capable of sustaining this over four days and winning this thing? Oh, man, Xander's been playing so good uh, for so long now. And even this year, I mean, had a chance at a lot of other big tournaments, including last week. So, yeah, I think he can sustain it over four days. He's in great form. When you look at, like, the data on him, like, some places have him ranked as high as the second, you know, number two or three ranked player in the world. So, you know, and we've seen him play well in majors before. Obviously, the thing with Xander is, like, can he close the door? And, you know, until he does that, there's going to be a lot of doubt about that, but I, I certainly think he's in good enough form uh, physically and mentally right now to get it done this week. Yeah, it's nice to see him off to a good start. So how about his – so the thing I always wonder about with him is, like, closing time, right? Is mm-hmm. I mean, is that the blade? Is that emotions? Like, what do you think that's been so elusive for him when it, can't, when it comes to closing time? You know, that's an interesting thing. You know, I, I happened to be on the Corn Ferry Tour the year that he graduated. Uh, I was caddy for Seamus Power, and he came out of a really good class in 2016 and kind of got his card. He was like the last man to get it. And, you know, he was, you know, very unheralded always, but just kept quiet, do his thing. And, you know, I think sometimes he got thrust into it pretty quick because he was playing well right away. And, you know, I think these guys, you know, certainly have to believe in themselves when it's all said and done. And I'm not saying he doesn't believe in himself, but when you start stacking it up with other big dogs up there, um, you know, you can get mental on you pretty quick. So I don't know if he's done the best in handling that throughout his career. Um, but, you know, he's got an Olympic gold to show for it and mm. uh, some other nice tournament wins. So, I mean, I got to think it's around the corner for him inevitably. John, I... You kind of got me thinking about guys that, you know, maybe we like how they play or they've got a lot of talent that maybe haven't broken through yet. You obviously spent a lot of time uh, on the Corn Ferry Tour. You saw a lot of these guys coming up. Uh, You spent some time on the PGA Tour as well as a caddy. Is there a guy that, and he doesn't have to be in the field. This is kind of more of a general question. But is there a guy that you saw when you were out there that you were just always surprised never had kind of the wins or more success based on how you felt about him as a golfer? Mm, that's a good question. Um, boy. Yeah. I mean, you know, it just goes back to the whole, it's so hard to win and there's guys that you might be like, ah, oh, he's not that good or that didn't impress me very much. And then they figure out a way, uh, you know, to rack up the wins. Uh, one of the guys that I saw there, you know, when I got to caddy a few about a month ago with, uh, uh, Scott Kaczewski out in San Antonio for the tournament before the Masters week. And we got paired up there with the Gim Reaper, who's uh, making a, a David, little bit of a Yeah, Gim. Yeah. <laughs> right there. So, you know, Doug's an example of a guy like that. Like, you know, 
played really good as an amateur, mm-hmm. good college player. And you're like, man, why hasn't he kind of broken through yet? When we were out there with him, he was really going along nicely. He made a nice caddy change uh, over the off season. And, and those two are rolling out there right now. So he's at like three or four under to start the day. So, you know, that's, you know, I, I probably need a little bit more time to think on that question. It's a good one, but uh, you know, it's just, sometimes there's no rhyme or reason for the guys that break through and the guys that don't. Yeah, fresh off, and they, listen, they, they're going to look pretty smart if, if today picks up. But I was in the dark horse category because Robbie and I always like to look at long <laughs> shots, and and these guys are both what sixty six plus sixty six hundred, and they're off to good starts. And we kind of both guys we wonder where their game is headed. Jordan Spieth. And, uh, and Dustin Johnson, both off to relatively quick starts today, but we're in the dark horse category f- for the championship this weekend. Does that sound about right to you? We, we question Speeth after the Masters. Fair or foul? Yeah, um, I guess it's probably foul. I mean, I, I was in the same boat there for for a minute too, you know. Him and Greller have been together for a long time, but they've got so many trophies, and you know it's just been a minute for him. He had a great press conference the other day where he was just kind of talking about how watching his buddy Scheffler kind of take it to another level was kind of inspiring for him. It kind of was pissing him off too, but it was inspiring <laughs> for him. And here he is going for the career Grand Slam this week. You know he's coming in with some decent form. He hasn't been able to put like three or four rounds together yet, so it's nice to see Jordan off to a good start but yeah like with you know as good as Shepherds are playing and Rory like you see you know these guys coming in like more as dark horses than they ever have been and there's this new young blood out there as well when you talk about a guy like Aberg you know who's not playing great to start but you know like another guy that was coming in on the dark horse list that's playing well to start is Tony Finau you know like yeah a guy that you know a year ago everybody was like He's going to, and he had a good year last year. And, but Scotty's playing so good that it's like, oh, well, he can't possibly beat him. But, you know, Tony's showing well. He likes playing on the bent grass. He likes the longer golf course. He's rolling some putts in early on. So he's maybe a guy that can kind of stick around for the whole week, too. We're talking with John Rathaus, former PGA caddy, as well as the host of the Quiet Please podcast. Uh, John, let, let's get to the course a little bit here. You're at Valhalla in, in Kentucky there. Is there a type of guy that you like at this particular course as opposed just in terms of how they play their game? Yeah, I mean, I just think it's like it's the third longest course these guys have seen all all year. So I think length, you know, is always a, a big factor. And so that'll come into play this week. I think the first two days of the week with pace of play and stuff and, and the club pros that are in it and stuff, um, not to, to bad mouth any of those guys. We've got some, you know, Ryan Vermeer has done us well in, in the past uh, out of Omaha. So I think they just like to get the guys around the course. See, they might not dip it out as much to start, um, but it's a long golf course. The greens actually are quite small. So, you know, that's like, hey, I need a guy that's hitting his irons well. Um, it's soft enough right now where everybody can kind of attack. Um, and then it kind of turns into a little bit of a putting contest too. I mean, you see – the guys up at the top of the board right now are all really pretty solid putters. And you talk about Shoffley and Spieth. Um, so, you know, I think it's the, it's the one major where, you know, guys can kind of break through. So you never know what it's going to all amount to. But uh, it's no wind out there today to start to. It's wet and soft. So it's just going to play longer but easier for these guys without the wind and, and the softer conditions. Hey, does six PGA Tour wins – uh 20, 23 top fives um does that sound right for cam smith i always feel like he comes up in these discussions as guys to take guys to pick and in tournaments does that sound about right for when when you think of cam smith his talents versus the the and his production yeah i think it sounds about right He's not going to rack up any more PGA Tour wins anytime. I know, right? <laughs> although, although he, uh, if he found a way to win this week, it would count. But like, you know, I think that's a guy. The, the irony, incredible. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and, and he's an incredible putter and incredible short game. He's probably a guy that has gotten the most out of his game that he possibly could. Mm. Not a big, tall guy. Doesn't hit it a mile. 
pretty wild when it comes down to it compared to others. So I feel like he's a guy that, you know, went on a nice run there for a few years. He's quieted down a little bit now. Um, so, you know, that sounds about right for him. Um, and I think he's gotten a lot out of his game for sure. Uh, John, give me a deep cut here. A guy that's maybe no one's talking about or that's kind of a long shot in this particular tournament that maybe you're not picking him to win, but you're like, hey, that, that's a guy I could see being in contention on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, the, the couple guys that, you know, like we were talking about long shots that are getting, you know, pushed down the board even further than they have been in, you know, even recent years. Uh, you know, Sung J.M. is coming in, playing very well. Uh, he actually had a win in Korea like three weeks ago. He went over there and played. Uh, Sepp Straka, you know, was on the Ryder Cup team last year. He's coming in, playing really well. So those are a couple guys that, like, I feel like are probably actually could close the door um, this week. And, you know, when you look at, you know, a few guys that – even maybe more dark horses. Uh, Nick Taylor, you know, had that great win in, in uh, Phoenix earlier this year. Like, that dude's a baller. And, and maybe some of the younger guys like uh, Jake Knapp, you know, that, that hits it a mile and, and had a win in Mexico earlier this year. So What, what, a, what about, I don't, John, What a, real quick, I'm sorry. What about Neiman? I know he's not a long shot. I think he's like 33, plus 3,300. You like Joaquin's game here? Yeah, I mean, I think with the softer conditions, I think that's good for him. Like, he sometimes, you know, hits the ball a little bit lower. I think he's added a little bit of height in that in recent years. From recent, this last year, I think, from what I can tell, he obviously was on a heater to start the year. So he's maybe quieted down, at least on, on the radar of most people coming in. So, uh, absolutely, he is a guy that could get it done. Absolutely. That's John Rathaus, former caddy and host of the Quiet Please podcast right here on Herd Out Sports Network. John, we appreciate it as always. We'll catch up with you again soon. Thanks, John. Sounds good. Yeah, thanks, guys. Have a good weekend. More Herd at Sports Radio coming up tomorrow.